following NBC Sports program is brought to you in living color. It's always a feat playing against Ohio State because they're a classical team with runners like Archie and the, the former players that play with Coach Woody Hayes. And it's always a great feat playing something like this. This is what practice in June, July, and August, you know, you're working out for. And that summer ball, that's what it all turns out to be, the Rose Bowl. That's what you're working for to come to the Rose Bowl. NBC Sports presents a look at the 1975 Rose Bowl game. Brought to you by St. Regis, a world leader in paper, packaging, and lumber products. Happy New Year, everybody. Kurt Gowdy here and Al Rogatis for NBC. And we have a gorgeous afternoon for the 1975 Rose Bowl game. It's been very windy out here the last two days, but the winds have subsided. We have a bright sunshine, crisp weather, and Al, I'd call it almost a perfect day for football. It's absolutely perfect for running the football and for throwing it. Two of the stars, of course, heralded in the pregame buildup, the two men who finished one and two in the Heisman Trophy winners, and Al talked to them earlier. Two of America's great athletes. Anthony Davis will be wearing 28, USC. Arch Griffin will be wearing 45, Ohio State. Both All-Americans, the Heisman Trophy winner here on my left, the runner-up on my far left, both have exceeded 1,000 yards in rushing the three years in each of the years that they were at their respective schools, and as I say, playing in their third Rose Bowl. Now that, Anthony, for you as a senior must have special meaning in arts. You're one of the few people that's in a position to ever have played, assuming next year is a big one also, in four. What does the Rose Bowl, Anthony, mean? particularly well, it's, to you. It's, it's, it's a classical thing for me and I've always looked forward to something like this. Even when I was a kid I thought of playing the Rose Bowl. Even when I see the Simpsons and, and Jimmy Jones and stuff in this sort from our school and, and it's always a feat playing against Ohio State because they're a classical team with runners like Archie and the, the former players that play with Coach Woody Hayes and it's always a great feat playing something like this. Something How about that you, you always remember. Well this is what you know you work up for all season. Uh, this is what practice in June, July and August you know you're working out for and that summer ball, that's what it all turns out to be, the Rose Bowl. That's what you're working for, to come to the Rose Bowl. We know you two fellows have been together so much lately, and you've gotten to be pretty good friends off the field. Now, is there any kind of strategy discussion that maybe you'd like to have right now? <laughs> no, I mean, I really don't like get into the thing about football. One thing I like to talk about, we do run some offenses. Uh, we run the eye, and, and we run you know, off tackle, sweep, blast. And, and, uh, my coach has stated that I've, my best play in the high formation is off tackle. You know, but I think it's the blast. Yeah. I like to. I like to ask Archie what's what's the best play for him in the high formation. Well, the best play that I like to run is off tackle. Um, I hey. figured, you know, <laughs> that's where all the blocking is, where those tackles are. So I'd I'd rather run that. Archie, you can't do that. I'm, I run off tackle. Well, you know, both of us can run off tackle. You know, we are different offenses. We're not going to clash against each other. Hey, I heard uh, that you took your offensive line out to dinner. Is that right? Yeah, I did. Uh, so happily, you know, I had a little money in the savings, and, uh, you know, I got a pretty good thing at, at Lars, and we, and we have the beef bowl, and uh, I took him there. And I feel that, you know, taking my offensive line out was, was something special to me because those are guys who who don't really get the credit because if, if, if they don't score or knock or blow a hole for either Archie and myself, uh, we, can't, we can't run. So. Well, Arch, this is the rubber match. It was 42-17 two years ago, 42-21. You folks came back and won it last year. It's Anthony's finale. You've got another shot at it. It's the Rose Bowl, and it is the big one. How do you feel about it? Well, this, I feel it's going to be a really a great game. Uh, this is supposed to be the best game of the three years. Um, I'm sure you know it's going to be a great clash. Uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of hitting in there, I'm sure. And uh, I think, you know, it'll be hard for me to gain. And I'm, I sure, I'm sure our defense is going to be ready, too, just like for Anthony. Two great football players. It's going to be a great Rose Bowl. We'll be back with more Rose Bowl preview in just a moment. Let's look into the tree, one of America's most important raw materials. It's made up of heartwood, sapwood, bark, and a microscopically thin layer of the cambium. But how wisely is it being used? St. Regis is out to use every bit of it. We use the sawdust and bark for fuel to generate electricity, 
We're working on ways to use the branches and the stumps. In fact, we even use the pine scent. It's the chemical component of the wood. As a worldwide leader in packaging, this is just one of the many ways St. Regis is working to increase America's supply of available wood. So we can keep up with the demand for our wood-based packaging materials, like these boxes, cartons, and bags, without asking nature to give us more than she can. And that's why we at St. Regis say, we're serving man and nature to the benefit of both. Two great players, two super teams, and two great coaches. And earlier this week, Kurt Gowdy had a chance to talk to a really great one. This segment of our Rose Bowl pregame show is our custom usually to have the two head coaches. We hope to have John McKay today, but as we film the show, John had the flu, was ill in bed, couldn't be here. We have with us, of course, Woody Hayes, winding up 24 years, head coach at Ohio State, his seventh Rose Bowl appearance. Right now, I think the most talked about, controversial, maybe football coach of all time. His <laughs> books are out on you. Everybody says what a bad guy you are. Then they write stories, what a great guy you are. Uh, how do you react to all this controversy that swirls around you? It worries me very little. You'd be surprised. I just don't bother to think about it. Or if they write some things I don't want to read, well, I just don't read them. You went through the season after suffering a heart attack. Did, yeah. you, did you change your regime any this year? No, no, I couldn't change. I uh, took six weeks, as the doctors felt I should, to rest. And then after that, I went right back to work, and I've done exactly the same. Maybe worked a little harder, just to prove I can do it. <laughs> You've been quoted, Woody, that uh, this may be the greatest college team of all time that you're coaching that you bring into the Rose Bowl. Do you, you really believe that? I don't know. It hasn't been yet. It almost was. During the middle of the season, it would score maybe eight times in a row. Well, teams just don't do that. And uh, we do have versatility that we have not had before. Now, last year, at times, our defense carried our offense. This year, for the most of the year, it's been the other way around. But we think our defense is getting more healthy than they were any time this year, and we think they can give a good accountability of themselves. You've also been quoted that John McKay is the most innovative college coach in America. Well, I only say that because I have to play him. I want yeah. to keep him softened up. Yeah. But <clears throat> really, I do think he is. I think the eye formation that he's come in with that gives you the opportunity of using the great talents of a great back to hit any hole on the line. And then if you've got a good quarterback to tie it up with, in which that tailback's getting the ball, then again he isn't, then he quarterback's coming rolling out of there with good speed it gives you a real one-two punch and John McKay is really the man who developed this system along with men in motion which we did years ago but he used them for a different purpose than we used them years ago and uh, uh, he I feel that he has done the most in college football of any single coach there are right now four distinct systems of college offenses but uh, even with those four, each coach who takes on one of them or puts his own little ideas into mm -hmm. it. And we've taken a lot of things from John McKay. Uh, but when I went into the I formation, I made sure of one thing, that I had a good quarterback as well as a good tailback. Woody Hayes, the head coach of Ohio State. And amidst all the controversy about Woody, you want to really go find out something about him, go to his players who have played <laughs> for him after they get out of the school. They're his biggest boosters. We'll have more after this. Hundreds of miles out in space, a NASA satellite makes infrared images, and St. Regis was there. What's a paper company doing with outer space technology? Learning to spot sick trees like this one. With infrared imagery, we hope to identify diseased trees or insect-infested ones much sooner. Using this infrared technology, we think we'll be able to save wood that often went to waste before. As a worldwide leader in packaging, this is just one of the many ways St. Regis is working to increase America's supply of available wood. So we can keep up with the demand for our wood-based packaging materials, like these boxes, cartons, and bags, without asking nature to give us more than she can. And that's why we at St. Regis say, we're serving man and nature to the benefit of both. And hovering behind us, not in the booth, but on chromo key, is the NBC telecopter. Those are the San Gabriel Mountains in the background. 
I'll never forget, Al, the first time I ever walked into this Rose Bowl, eight years ago, took a sight uh, at this Mammoth Stadium, 106,000 people, the surrounding countryside, and every New Year's Day has been a beautiful day like this. It is one of the most imposing sights in sports. Carried every year that I'm here with you, I get that same feeling over and over. And uh, we've also been amazed this year that uh, the city of Roses, of course, Pasadena is active 365 days a year, but I've been amazed at the multi-million dollar conference, exhibition center, that is now part of Pasadena's skyline, and this city has really been on the move. Thousands of people line the streets today for the Tournament of Roses Parade, which has been held since 1890. And this Rose Bowl Stadium you're looking at now, the first Rose Bowl game played in this stadium was January 1st, 1923. Today, there will probably be 107,000 people here. Capacity is 104.7, but they'll squeeze 107 in here today. We'll have more of a look at the Rose Bowl game right after this message. You're now entering America's most unique state forest, a grove of box huckleberry that has been set aside in Pennsylvania. And even though it's over a thousand years old, it's only three inches high. But in our seedling nurseries, we're developing superior trees to grow as fast as possible. Nature can afford to wait thousands of years for plants to grow inches. America can't, especially in our commercial forests. We're even finding trees like the one on the left that grow up to 50% faster in certain areas than the one in the middle. As a worldwide leader in packaging, this is just one of the many ways St. Regis is working to increase America's supply of available wood. So we can keep up with the demand for our wood-based packaging materials, like these boxes, cartons, and bags, without asking nature to give us more than she can. And that's why we at St. Regis say, we're serving man and nature to the benefit of both. Ladies and gentlemen, the Watergate jury is meeting right now. And we may have the verdict of that trial. As soon as we have it, we'll switch to Washington, D.C. and to an NBC News correspondent for up to the second report. Speaking of reports, we have USC this year off to a stumbling start, losing its opening game. They tied another game. They wound up with nine victories, a loss and a tie. Ohio State upset by Michigan State, their only loss. Certainly out two of the top four teams in America. The winner of this game, depending on what happens tonight in the Orange Bowl, might merge with the national champ. How rare it is, Kurt, to see so many seniors coming back to play in another Rose Bowl game. This should be a very high-scoring affair. I think it's going to be one of the most exciting Rose Bowls of all time. Well, certainly on paper, they have the matchups. And uh, that's it right now as we've taken a look at the Rose Bowl. The USC band is on the field. And this look at the 1975 Rose Bowl game has been brought to you by St. Regis, a world leader in paper, packaging, and lumber products. The Blues take on the Sabres in exciting NHL action Sunday on NBC.
1975 Rose Bowl game is brought to you by Cotton Incorporated, the fiber company representing America's cotton producers, by Goodyear, the makers of Bigfoot, the new polysteel radial tire. It keeps its feet even in the rain. By your nearby Dodge dealer, who invites you to see why a lot of people are saying, hey, Charger, and by Texaco, and the many thousands of independent Texaco retailers and distributors in all 50 states. Hi, everybody. Kurt Gowdy, Al Rogatis of NBC. And on behalf of all the personnel of NBC Sports, a very happy new year to you all. Ohio State, USC. This is our second instant replay of the Rose Bowl game two years ago. Three years in a row they have met, and this will be the rubber game for many of the seniors of both teams. We have been favored by a perfect afternoon for football. It's crisp, sunny, the wind has died down, and it just should be ideal. And now, Ross Porter of NBC here in Los Angeles will be roaming the field today. Henry Aaron, the home run king of all time, has the honor of being the Grand Marshal of the Tournament of Roses Parade, and let's go down to Ross to talk to Henry. Henry, first of all, Happy New Year to you. Well, thank you very much, Ross. How was that five-and-a-half-mile parade route today? Really, I didn't know whether I went five-and-a-half miles. I was enjoying it so well. I really had a marvelous time today. I really did. I enjoyed it so well. And uh, uh, if, if anyone ever seen a Rose Bowl parade, really, if they've never seen it, I would advise them to come out and see one. You said yesterday when you got the invitation, you had to think about it. But the more you thought about it, the more excited you got to be Grand Marshal. The more I'm glad I accepted, really, because really it was a great, it was a great honor and a great tribute. Because really it was one of the most honorable things, one of the most grateful things I've ever had in my life. The people, people stored upon me. You're a big college football fan. Who do you like today in the game? Well, I make my prediction after the game, Ross. I'm not, I'm not gonna go on the limb right now, but I think this is two fine universities that are playing against each other, and uh, I think it's gonna be a good game. Henry, best wishes to you. We'll see you on NBC in the spring, and a new role as a designated hitter in the American well, League. Thank you very much, Ross, and I'm going up here and enjoy the ball game. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay. Happy New Year, Hank. Thank you. Okay. Let's take a look now at some of the highlights of the action and the stars you're going to be watching today. And first of all, the USC Trojans, who wound up the season in a blaze, averaging 41 points a game in their last four games. They were off to a stumbling start, but their defense was capable all year. They averaged their opponents only 11 points a game. And that's All-American Roverback Charles Phillips, number 49. He picked three fumbles out of the air and ran them back for touchdowns. A three-time All-American, the first for USC is their linebacker, Richard Wood. He'll be number 83. Quarterback Pat Hayden, a recent winner of a Rhodes Scholarship, has completed 239 passes in his career. And that's his buddy, J.K. McKay. They've been a battery since high school days. Hayden has thrown 31 touchdown passes for the Trojans, four big ones against Notre Dame. There's McKay grabbing in the end zone, the last regular game of the season. Alan Carter may be the best reserve tailback in the country. He'll be number 21. He runs 109-4, averages five and a half yards a carry. But the Trojan offense is led by this man, number 28, Anthony Davis, the Pacific 8's all-time touchdown leader. He broke O.J. Simpson's single game rushing record. Touchdown returns on kickoff, he's been the best. Set an NCAA record, six touchdown returns in the kickoffs in three years, three of them against Notre Dame. And here he is against Notre Dame, running that touchdown back to open the second half for 102 yards. He'll be a marked man when Ohio State kicks off today. Very gently now, Anthony. Uh, all right, let's take a look now at the Ohio State Buckeyes. Over on the left side as a linebacker will be Bruce Elia, number 36. He was a fullback last year, and this year he led the Buckeyes in tackles. They have an All-American in 88 named Van Decree, an All-American tackle number 71 named Pete Cusey, and also an All-American in the secondary, Neil Colsey, number 20. Tom Claven's four field goals, three of them over 40 yards, kicked Ohio State into the Rose Bowl game against Michigan. Ohio State has superb running backs. This man is a freshman last year. Pete Johnson scored three touchdowns. He'll probably start today. 
The Buckeyes ran for over 4,000 yards in 11 games. Running has always been a hallmark of Woody Hayes' team. This is the wingback, Brian Bashnagel, who's the most versatile player on the team and also its best pass receiver. Champ Henson has scored a touchdown every nine times he's carried the ball in college. He'll be number 38. He once carried 44 times in a game, a typical Ohio State bruising fullback. The most valuable player in this game last year was a sophomore, number seven, Cornelius Green, the quarterback. I think it'll be decided by the quarterback today, Pat Hayden and Cornelius Green. College football's player of the year was Archie Griffin. He's only 5'9", 180. He's never stopped the first time you hit him. Marvelous balance and continues to break tackles. The fifth junior ever to capture the Heisman Trophy. He's gained at least 100 yards rushing in each of his last 22 games. That's an all-time college record. A runner with outstanding balance, Woody Hayes said he's the best player he's ever coached in 24 years at Ohio State and the most popular player he's ever tutored. And here's the queen, Robin Carr, 18 years old. She's quite a talker. And we were at the uh, press luncheon the other day. She does a Martha Mitchell at those. Pretty too. Very lovely. Al, uh, two years ago, USC beat Ohio State scoring 42 points. Last year, Ohio State scored 42 points on the Trojans. You look for a high scoring game this year. Well, I look for a lot of excitement, Garrett. I would think we're going to see high scoring. I, I don't know how you stop a team like Ohio State, 364 yards, a team like USC that can throw and run the football like they can. There's lots of excitement. There's veterans. They've been in the Rose Bowl, and pressure should not be a factor. There's the largest brass and percussion band in the world, the famous Ohio State Marching Band. The two teams are in the locker room. They'll be ready to come out for the opening kickoff. We'll be right back for the start of the 1975 Rose Bowl game. Of the new personal mid-size cars, one is getting a lot of recognition. Hey, Charger! Yesterday's Dodge Charger got recognition for winning 75 racing titles. Hey, Charger! Today's Charger is a mid-sized car with a style that keeps it ahead of the crowd. And it's getting recognition. Hey, Charger! Maybe too much recognition? Hey, Charger! I'd like to show you the Xerox portable copier. Funny, it was here a minute ago. <laughs> of course, somebody probably rolled it over to accounting or down to legal. That's what's so great about the 3100 portable copier. Anyone can make copies from light originals or bulky bound volumes or photographs. Let me show you. Well, <laughs> you can count on it for making copies, if not commercials. <laughs> I'm not an actor. I'm a small businessman. But for over two years now, you've seen me in oh, this commercial. Oh, oh. I'd like to get rid of some of the gray, but not all of it. Grecian Formula 16 lets you control just how much gray you slowly get rid of. Some of it, most of it, or all of it. Two years ago, I used it every day for about three weeks until I got rid of just as much gray as I wanted. It's as easy to use as water. No mess, won't rub off. Now, I use it just once a week or so to keep it this way. Grecian Formula 16. All right, now let's meet close up some of the starters today for the University of Southern California. And by the way, they're all senior. Pat Hayden, quarterback, senior, from West Covina, California. John McKay, senior split end from Covina. Jim Oradovich, senior, tied in, El Segundo, California. Bob McCaffrey, center, senior from Bakersfield. Bill Bain, senior, offensive guard, Pico Rivera, California. Steve Knudsen, senior offensive tackle, Southgate, California. Anthony Davis, tailback, senior, San Fernando. Richard Wood. Senior middle linebacker, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Charles Phillips, uh, senior rover back, Pasadena, California. Marvin Cobb, senior safety man from Riverside. Mike Riley, senior defensive tackle from Phoenix, Illinois. Otha Bradley from St. Joseph, Louisiana, senior nose guard. 
Dale Mitchell, senior outside linebacker from Carlsbad, California. Eddie Powell from Richmond, California, outside linebacker, senior. 38 of the Ohio State Buckeyes will be playing in their third Rose Bowl. You're going to meet 14 of these great Buckeyes. One of them is not a senior. I wonder if you can guess the one man that we're thinking about. His number, by the way, 45. Doug France, Dayton, Ohio, tight end, senior. Kurt Schumacher from Lorraine, Ohio. I'm a senior and I play offensive tackle. Dick Mack, senior center from Bucyrus, Ohio. Steve Myers, senior, Ken, Ohio, offensive guard. Scott Donnelly, senior from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, offensive right tackle. Van Ness Decree, senior, defensive end from Warren, Ohio. Jim Cope, defensive end, senior, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Pete Cusick, defensive right tackle, senior, Lakewood, Ohio. Bruce Celia, linebacker, senior, Cliffside Park, New Jersey. Arnie Jones, linebacker, senior, Dayton, Ohio. Cornelius Neal Cozy, defensive halfback, senior from Miami, Florida. Steve Luke, senior defensive back from Masson, Ohio. Rich Parsons, senior safety man from Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. Archie Griffin, tailback, junior from Columbus, Ohio. The Ohio State Band is still on the field. University of Southern California was shocked in its opener, losing to Arkansas. Then they came back to squeeze by Pittsburgh, downed Iowa impressively. Washington State just got by Oregon. Oregon State, they were tied by California. Then they really wound up, flattened their ears, and away they went, beating Stanford 34-10, USC uh, down Washington 42-11. 34-9 over UCLA and 55-24. Right now, here is the Ohio State alumni, Carmen, Ohio. One of the most famous college songs in America. introduced by the sounds of the campus chime. And now out of the outline of the state of Ohio, the Ohio State Marching Band will move into the Eagle and Banner. And in just a moment or two, we'll have our national anthem. Ohio State roared all the way until they ran into Michigan State. Their last three games, they did not play as well offensively as they did during the latter part of October and early November. When, as Woody Hayes said in the pregame show, we would score eight touchdowns in a row, holding the opponents scoreless. It was almost awesome. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem.
We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Well, both teams are still in their locker rooms. Ohio State had uh, an early appearance. They were out here about an hour before scheduled kickoff time. USC Al came out late and did not stay long. And here is Tommy Trojan, the USC mascot. I think that's Tommy the third. They had to break him in. Look at that noble stride. captains for Ohio State. That's Richard Wood, 83, and number 10 is Pat Hayden. They're the two captains for USC. Of the five captains that you're looking at right now for Ohio State, four of them made All-American. And uh, they are Colsey, Cusick, Jones, Griffin, and Meyer. Now, let's go down to the officials, the referee, Charlie Moffat of Seattle, Washington. number 71, Arnie Jones, 42, Neil Cozy, number 20, 52, Steve Myers, number 45, Archie Griffin. My fellow officials today are Dick Waterhouse at line judge, Marv Tomervik, back judge, Russ Kemper, umpire, George Sladge, field judge, Jay Settle, head linesman, Jim Sheffer will be our alternate. All right, gentlemen, captains, you know your responsibilities. Come up quickly on the penalties. We'll tell you what occurred. You must make a decision immediately. Fair enough? All right, Ohio State, who's going to call the coin in the air? All right, here it is. That's the tails, that's the head. Call it, please. Heads. It is heads. Ohio State is one. There's this. You get a choice. You will receive. Here's a commemorative coin for you. You must choose a goal to defend. Put your backs that way, your backs this way. And we hear from Washington that there's apparently a verdict in the Watergate trial. We'll return to the Rose Bowl in the opening kickoff following this report from the federal courthouse in Washington and NBC News correspondent Carl Stern. Are they going to hold the kickoff? Oh, good, good, Dick. How long will they take? What are you going to do? Every game we do, there's something going on in news somewhere that they cut away from. They pay a million. Unbelievable. State has won the toss. Will receive on your left. They'll be in the white. USC in the Cardinal. Dark jerseys will kick off from your right. And two colleges rich in football tradition and winning tradition collide again in the Rose Bowl. The referee today, Charlie Moffat from Seattle. He's a corporate director of personnel of the Boeing Company. Russ Kemper of Cincinnati is an ex executive. Kemper Sons Incorporated. Jay Settle of Cypress, California is the head linesman. He's a deputy superintendent of schools in Huntington Beach, California. Richard Walter House of Ann Arbor, Michigan 
the line judge. He's a construction company owner. The back judge is Marv Tomervik of Tacoma, Washington. He's a fuel oil distributor. The field judge is George Slatty of Adena, Michigan. He's a district manager of insurance. And as usual, we see it in the colleges and the pros, these officials get paid, but they're really doing it for love of football. It's a hobby to them. Lima Halo, Chris Lima Halo of Cabina, California will kick off. 61-year-old Woody Hayes, who said he hasn't slowed down a bit after a heart attack last year, back in the Rose Bowl again. Gets his team out of there. One man to watch on this kickoff return, and they'll probably be trying to kick away from him, will be Len Willis, the fastest player to ever play in an Ohio State uniform. He'll be number 89. He runs 100 and 9-2. He's run two back this year for 97 yards against Oregon State and 93 yards against Northwestern. In junior college, he ran seven kickoffs in a row back for touchdown. There he is, Lenny Willis. He's deep. Archie Griffin's on the 10-yard line on the far side. Brian Bashnagel on the 10-yard line on the near side. That's Griffin. And here we go. One of the top matchups of all time in the Rose Bowl. It's a kick coming to Willis. He has it on the six, bubbles the ball. He's in trouble right now, and he's buried under, and Ohio State has four field positions to open the game. Downfield is David Lewis, an outside reserve linebacker, San Diego, a sophomore to knock him down to the five-yard line. Ohio State's ball, first down. Cornelius Green is the quarterback, number seven. The fullback will be a sophomore, Pete Johnson. Green's a junior. Archie Griffin's a tailback, 45 a junior. Bash Nagel is 48 a junior. This backfield will return intact next year. Duck France, 80, is the tight end. We'll get the split in for you in just a minute. I think it's Willis. Here's a first down play. And it goes to the fullback. Pete Johnson, he's to the eight-yard line. He's hit by Art Riley, the defensive right tackle for USC. Hazel has started, number 82. Kurt Schumacher's at left tackle, 72. Ted Smith's at left guard, number 60. Dick Mack, the brother of Tom Mack of the Rams at the center, 69. Steve Myers playing with a broken wrist at the right guard, 52. And Scott Danley, 73, is the right tackle. Second down, seven. The pitch out is to Griffin. He's at the 10, and he's hauled down in the 11-yard line by the All-American linebacker, Richard Wood, number 83. It'll be third down and four for Ohio State. Third down. Three to go for Ohio State. Griffin will stop short of a first down by Art Riley again. USC uses a three-man front of Jeter, 79 at left tackle. Both of Bradley, 92, the nose guard, and Riley, 70, the right tackle. The two men standing up on the line are really linebackers. Mitchell, 85, on the left, and on the right, Ed Powell, 87. In punt formation is Tom Skoldaney, the leading punter in America, average 45 yards. He didn't have enough punts to qualify for the punting championship, but he had the best average. A beautiful kick, driving Marvin Cobb back to his 35. Cobb is coming out, trying to get outside to the 40, and he's down on the 46-yard line. I think the flag was dropped. Not sure. It may have been something rolled along the field. Dick Mack, the center, went downfield. It was a penalty flag, and this is going to be a clipping against USC. Goldaney really laid the foot into that one, and you can see why he's the best punter in the history of Ohio State. You can see why he's All-American. You can also see where there might be a significant advantage between the two punters, field position. All right, the USC backfield. Pat Hayden will be a quarterback. 
The fullback will be Dave Farmer starting ahead of Ricky Bell. And the tailback, Farmer, will be number 15. And the tailback will be Anthony Davis, number 28. Sheldon Diggs is one outside receiver. He's 26. McKay is the other 25. Obradovich is a tight end, 89. Aiden on the first play to Davis. Davis is stacked up on the 27-yard line of USC. Arnie Jones, the middle linebacker in there. Four-man front for uh, Ohio State. Van de Cree will play the open side of the field, the wide side. He's 88. Nick Bonamici, 75, is the left tackle. Pete Cusick, 71, is the right tackle. Playing the short, the close side of the field at end is Jim Cope, 91, a very underrated player. Ilya is the left linebacker. Arnie Jones in the middle, and Ken Thompson's on the right, number nine. Ricky Bell's now in at fullback, second and eight for the Trojans. In motion goes Sheldon Diggs, the flanker. Hayden will put it up. He throws it out to Diggs, and it's too high for him. Third and eight for the Trojans. Playing at halfback on the open side for Ohio State is Colsey, number 20. On that same side of him, deep safety is Tim Fox, number 12. Doug Plank will be number 28, and number 46 is Steve Luke. Actually, the way this Ohio State defense finally deploys itself, it's almost identical to USC. Arnie Jones moves head up on the nose guard. It could become a five-man line or a three. They're looking like they want USC to run straight ahead and not wide. Third and eight. It's a draw play up to the 30. Goes Davis. He has a first down. Beautifully executed draw play to the 44. Van Decree made the stop on Anthony Davis. Rich Parsons helped him. Now there is a perfect play and super execution. The two tackles are playing it wide. Hayden very beautifully hands it off the outside rush. You take the linebacker and you've got a big gainer. Excellent call. 17 yards for Anthony Davis. Notice where the white ball is right now. Where the ball's on the white and it's very difficult to see. But that might confuse him on some pass patterns playing, running over that uh, flag uh, painted on the field. Davis to the 50-yard line. And right now he's out gaining Archie Griffin. Pete Cusick, 71, tripped him up from Lakewood, Ohio. Davis averaged 123 yards a game this year. Archie Griffin averaged 147 yards a game. Davis was out gained, but in total yardage, Davis was the leader in kickoff returns and when you put everything together. Good man to watch, Kurt. Number 36, Bruce Ilya. Fullback last year, excellent linebacker. Two wide receivers way out of the picture at the bottom of your screen now. The pitch is to Davis. He's at the 50. He's in Ohio State territory to the Ohio State 45, and he appears to have a first down. He's tackled by Steve Luke from Massillon, Ohio, the close side halfback. But right now, it's USC moving on the ground against Ohio State. Ohio State has not been as good defensively this year as last year. Last year, Ohio State shut out four opponents. This year, the defense did not record a shutout. No score, 10.50 to play in the first period. USC on the march. They're at the Ohio State 45. A slot left formation, the fullback running the ball. And that's Ricky Bell. Big hole open for him. Ricky Bell, a sophomore, roars to the Ohio State 33, and another first down. All right, there it is again. They're trying again to cut off Anthony Davis wide. Hayden very wisely takes his fullback straight at him. If you get the nose guard, if you get the middle linebacker, you've got a big gainer. Van Decree making the tackle along with Ken Kuhn. And John McKay continues to alternate fullbacks. Bell goes out, a junior. Dave Farmer comes in. He'll be number 15. Davis is the tailback, a slot right. Coming in motion now is Diggs. They give it to Anthony Davis. He jitterbucks his way to the 30, 25. And he has a first down. Rich Parsons tackled him at the Ohio State 23. If he doesn't have a first down, he's very close. Gray-haired John McKay, the quipster of college coaching. Now they'll look to that far sideline. We may have a measurement. That's the star so far, Anthony Davis. Actually, Kurt, Hayden may be thinking he doesn't really want the first down. 
second and short puts you in a great position. Anthony Davis already has gained 40 yards in this game, and we have 10 minutes to play in the first period. Ken Kuhn, number 54 now, has gone in at the open side linebacking position in place of Bruce Ilya. Second down and an inch to go. And it's going to be a pass. He arches it deep to McKay, and it is intercepted by Neil Colsey. Colsey intercepts in the end zone. That's why he was unanimous defensive All-American this year. From Miami, Florida, Neil Colsey. The surprising thing there is that Pat Hayden went to the most logical receiver and against the All-American. Neil, number 20, Colsey. Great football player. Well, Ohio State now will go on the offense. And we'll tell you here at the Rose Bowl, the score, USC nothing, Ohio State nothing. There are a lot of cars on the road today. And even though we're all doing everything we can to conserve gasoline, we're still going to need a lot of it. And that's going to mean drilling a lot of oil wells. At Texaco, we're doing exactly that. From new wells right here in this country, we expect to get enough crude oil to make over 500 million gallons of gasoline. Enough to help keep half a million cars rolling for a whole year. To do this, in 1974 alone, we drilled over 1,600 new wells. That means completing an average of more than three wells a day. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. USC had moved from their 25-yard line to the 33-yard line of Ohio State on the ground. And now Ohio State has a ball in the interception. Hazel is the wide receiver right. Johnson the fullback in front of Archie Griffin. Griffin has the ball. So far, he's been contained. He gets a couple or three at the most. Both the Bradley, the nose guard, 92, and Art Riley, the right tackle stopping. Wood, Bruce are the inside linebackers. Marvin Cobb and Charlie Phillips are the deep men. Phillips is the rover. Ron Bush is the right cornerback, number 23, and Danny Reese, the left cornerback, 46. Len Willis has replaced Hazel as a... Uh, Here's a fake, and that's Fashnagel running his pet reverse. Fashnagel, who averaged 10 yards a carry this year, is the most versatile player on this team. Brian Fashnagel, another one of those juniors who has a chance to be in four Rose Bowls. Good fake. This is the kind of thing we're going to be seeing. Not only Fashnagel, if you take away Ohio State's middle, look for Cornelius Green and look for Fashnagel. First down, Ohio State on their 32-yard line. Boy, tripped up there is Cornelius Green. He was trying to hand off to his fullback and then option himself out. But Gary Jeter said, no, I'm going to handle this myself. And the left tackle of USC, Gary Jeter, who had to play against John Hicks as a freshman last year, who was voted one of the top rookies of pro football this year. Jeter of Cleveland, Ohio, made that play all by himself. It's a three-yard loss. Ohio State has a second and 13. They're on their own 29-yard line. We have no score. 8.15 to go in the first period. Bashnagel was in motion. And that's Pete Johnson, the fullback, on the option play. He comes up to the 35. Let's go quickly to Ross Porter for a report from the sidelines. Woody Hayes told us before the game he wants to put a man in motion more today than he has during the past. And John McKay's pregame plan was to run to that near sideline, stay away from the open side, but he did not do that, and Colsey picked off the pass. Thank you, Ross. And I think Woody Hayes is calling the plays, sending in his split ends, Hazel and Len Willis, bringing plays in. That's Bashnagel coming in motion. This is Green back to pass. Big rush on him. Throws a screen to Griffin. Griffin is up to the 40, and that's it. He stopped short of the first down. And Otha Bradley again, the senior nose guard from St. Joseph, Louisiana, brought him down from behind, number 92. 
when you have a team in trouble and you know they're going to pass, you can put the big rush on. He gets it out early. Arch Griffin has only caught seven passes his first year, five his second, four this year, and now the screen. Marvin Cobb is deep. In front of him is Charlie Phillips. Skuldaney's punt. Another high spiral floating to Cobb on the 14. He's being hit and down he goes. And right there on him is number 27, Tim Holy Cross of Bedford Heights, Ohio. So now USC's pinned back deep in their own territory. And while they uh, talk it over, we'll take a timeout and tell you the score is nothing, nothing. I'm wearing the sign of cotton. Look for it when you want to feel comfortable. When you see it on towels, you can count on them to be really soft and thirsty. When you see it on sheets, they'll be fresh and comfortable. On shirts, jeans, jackets too. Natural cotton makes you comfortable. So when you're looking for comfort, look for the sign of cotton. The more cotton, the better you feel. Of the new personal mid-size cars, one is getting a lot of recognition. Hey, Charger! Yesterday's Dodge Charger got recognition for winning 75 racing titles. Hey, Charger! Today's Charger is a mid-size car with a style that keeps it ahead of the crowd. And it's getting recognition. Hey, Charger! Maybe too much recognition? Hey, Charger! A dying man's last words lead to adventure and mystery on the high seas. Ralph Bellamy heads an all-star cast in The Log of the Black Pearl, an NBC Saturday night movie at 9, 8 central. All right, USC. Coming up on her 14-yard line. It's the 13 and a half. We'll call it the 14. That's Diggs in motion. to his 27 he has a first down Ken Kuhn the outside left linebacker brought him down helped by Tim Fox the safety man number 12 and Davis right now has over 50 yards already in this game I asked uh, John McKay Al I said is this man how do you compare him to OJ Simpson McKay said nobody is as good as OJ Simpson OJ is faster and bigger Good as Anthony Davis is. Fullback play. Breaking through is Rick Bell. Ricky Bell fumbled the ball, but the whistle had blown. Rich Parsons on him, and right now that USC medal is ripping openings in that Ohio State forward wall. Let me try to set it up. When you have a three-man front virtually with two linebackers, you bust right at the middle guard. Then you take the linebacker. When you've got a man like Ricky Bell, he gets there in a hurry. That is the key. If, Q, uh, if Cusick and Bonamucci Bucci cannot close off the middle, Ohio State may be forced out of this defense. First down, USC on their 42. Davis again, bouncing away. And he brought down on his 45-yard line on a slithering tackle by Tim Fox, who ran laterally with him and hung right in there. A three-yard pickup for Anthony Davis at second down, seven. John McKay said he's deeper in fullbacks this year than he's ever been. Rick Bell's a sophomore, Dave Farmer's a junior, and uh, mostly Tatupo is only a freshman. All three can play, and he'll play them all today. Neil Colsey is out, and Rule has gone in now. Bruce Rule replacing Colsey. I don't know what that's all about. Davis out in motion, the pass to the tight end of Bradovich. Radovich has a first down on the 38-yard line of Ohio State. A big senior tight end, 220 pounds. Here it is from the end zone. He hasn't caught many passes. He caught two big ones against Stanford to keep this team in. And this is the way Hayden likes him. The good quarterback knows how to use his tight end. Good play. Good call. USC has moved the ball better in the first period. We have a scoreless game. There are five minutes to go, first quarter. Colsey's back in now for Ohio State. First down for the Trojans on the Ohio State 38. The pitch is to Davis. Davis to the 35 of Ohio State. And he's met there by Steve Luke, one of the halfbacks in the Ohio State secondary. 
Also, 75 is the sophomore, Nick Bonamici. That was student body right. We talked about Buonamici, number 75. He's just a sophomore, and he's going to be a good football player. He's got a good one in front of him also. He played that well to be able to force it back to the inside. Second down, seven. A near offside, not quite, though. That's Ricky Bell banging up the middle again, and he's stalked by Nick Buonamici at number 42. Arnie Jones, the middle linebacker. Now the ball will be spotted down on the Ohio State 33-yard line. Put on the 32-yard line. Here's that situation again. It looks like pass. You can go straight up the middle. If you're going to attack, they may go after Steve Luke, number 46. The center converted to a cornerback. Third down and four. USC on the Ohio State 32. Anthony Davis runs for the first down. 25-yard line of Ohio State and Ken Kuhn of Louisville, Ohio tackled him there. Watch his hole open up from our end zone shot. You know, and he's running as well as we've seen a man run. He's playing the holes beautifully. He has that great peripheral vision. This is where the eye is so effective. That deep man has the opportunity to see those holes open. Look at that, 65 yards for Anthony Davis already. Incredible. Archie Griffin has only six yards. So you want to go it as an individual battle, Davis has all the best of it. Hayden hits the pass. That's Anthony Davis coming out of the backfield. They'll flare him out and throw to him in the flat and try and let him go to work one-on-one. -on -one. And he's hit by Bruce Rule, who brought him down, and Neil Colsey. They're short of a first down. This is a very scholarly attack this road scholar is putting together here, Kurt. And how he's one of the few men who've been a football star and been a road scholar. Carter now goes in for the first time replacing Anthony Davis. He'll be number 21, second down on the yard to go. And diving for the first down to the 11-yard line is Dave Farmer, the fullback. Farmer hit by Ken Kuhn. USC has a first down. The eye formation, as we said, permits you to pick your hole. That's Ilya right there. Arnie Jones, one-on-one -on -one blocking, and he picks the hole so perfectly. Good shot. Ken Kuhn is out, and Aaron Brown, a freshman from Warren, Ohio, is in. Two minutes to play in the first period. What a drive this is by USC. First down around the 11-yard line of Ohio State. They send Diggs the, uh, the flanker in motion. Now a counter play back to Ricky Bell. It doesn't go anywhere. Bruce Ilya stopped that play. Number 36. He was a fullback last year, a linebacker this year, and led the team in tackles. He replaced Eric. Ken Kuhn comes back in replacing Aaron Brown. Woody Hayes now is really shuffling his linebacking and his secondary, trying to do something to stop the USC uh, Mully attack that he's looking at. He sure is. And again, keep your eye on the top of your screen, that corner. Steve Luke is there. He may get some excitement. Anthony Davis is back in a tailback. Second down, 10 for the Trojans. They're on the 11-yard line of Ohio State. That's Diggs coming in motion. Here's a counter back to Davis, and he stopped for a loss that time. Jim Cope. 91 right on him from McKeesport, Pennsylvania. The senior doesn't get the plaudits of Van, D, uh, Van De Creed does at the other end, but he's an outstanding defensive end. It is now on the 13-yard line of Ohio State, third and 12 for USC. Once again, Steve Luke was man on man against number 25, John McKay. Timeout. And it's the Trojans who are calling the timeout. USC has asked for time. And we'll take time out here at the Rose Bowl with a score, nothing, nothing. Mm, I'll get it, I'll get it. McDonald's Big Mac, the big sandwich with a great big taste that everybody's talking about. Two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, oh, wait a minute. Two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Oh, got him! <laughs> 
two all beef patty special sauce. Two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, a sesame seed bun. Got it. Two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. I got it! McDonald's Big Mac. Just give us the word. Two all beef patty special sauce, cheese, lettuce, pickles, onions on a specially beat it. You deserve a break today at McDonald's. Where your dollar gets a break every day. A one-year-old diehard. A two-year-old diehard. A three-year-old diehard. And a four-year-old diehard. More than three hours later, they all started. Even the four-year-old diehard. The diehard, with extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. Sold only at Sears. Carter's replaced Davis at tailback. You might look for J.K. McKay now, number 25. Not easy to play on a powerhouse team coached by your father, but the McKays have handled it beautifully. Third and 12. Out of motion is Carter. Hayden is looking, looking. Fires. And it is over. McKay's head. He was wide open. McKay there, number 25. Nobody within five yards of him in the end zone, and Hayden threw it over his head. That's who they were looking for, but he missed him. The thing that was interesting, they broke the pattern. He could not locate his receiver downfield. McKay took it to the inside, and on the run, as Kurt said, he just missed the man. All right, Chris Limahalu, who made nine out of 14 field goals, will try a 30-yarder. Last year, he kicked a 47 and 42-yarder in a Rose Bowl. His kick is up, up, and it is good. And USC scores first in this game. They had a 73-yard drive that was stalled, and then they, cooked, they kicked the field goal. And in that drive, they had uh, 13 plays. And so far, they have been the dominant team in this game. They have controlled the ball about 85% of the time. Ohio State, so far, has not been able to move against USC. Here's that rerun of J.K. McKay. He leads the team in pass receiving. He caught two against Notre Dame. There he is now. See, he's wide open. But it's too late. The ball's by him. You saw a break in that defensive secondary, too, Kurt. Two men went with the wrong receiver, leaving him wide open. The 1975 Orange Bowl from Miami. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against Alabama's Crimson Tide with its exciting halftime pageantry will be coming up next after the conclusion of the Rose Bowl game. Now that field goal came with 41 seconds to go in the first period. So it's 3-0 USC. Willis is deep. He fumbled the last time to put Ohio State in a hole at the opening of the game. He's flanked by Griffin and Bashnagel. And Lima Halu will kick off. And his kick is coming to Bashnagel on the 10. He's out to the 20, 25, to his 29-yard line. Down covering that kick, Clay Matthews, who's just a freshman, and also Eugene Lord, a sophomore. All right, let's see if Ohio State can crank up its offense. So far, it hasn't. So far, they've stopped the Buckeye bullet number 45, Arch Griffin, but keep your eye on him. He can break long ones. First down. Here's the uh, reverse back to Bashnagel. He has three yards, and that's all. He's trapped on his 32-yard line. Last year, he carried only once in the Rose Bowl. This year, he's averaged 10 yards a carry. He was hit by Kevin Bruce, the inside linebacker, and Art Riley. Second down, seven for Ohio State. In this first period, USC has had the advantage of a 10-mile-an-hour breeze. The temperature is 55. Going in motion is Bashnagel. Green flips it out to Bashnagel, the 40. And he stopped at the 41. And Al, I think this is what they're going to have to do. They may have to throw more than an Ohio State team wants to throw. They're making a concession kind of early, Kurt. I'm not sure they have to. Uh, they're trying to hit straight up. At this point, USC very effectively closing off the middle. 
Well, a clock shows that the first quarter is over, but let's wait and see what the officials are going to decide. Well, they haven't changed. 1956. Hundreds of grooves are cut right into airport runways. Grooves to help channel away water and improve traction on wet surfaces. 1966. To help prevent water from building up under automobile tires, grooves are cut into freeways. Because the less water under your tires, the more traction you get. 1975. Goodyear presents the new polysteel radio, Bigfoot, with eight wide grooves specially designed to help improve traction in the rain. Eight wide grooves that help prevent water from building up between the road and the tire by helping to channel it away. Bigfoot with double steel belts and a high traction rubber that really grips on roads wet or dry. Get the tire that keeps its feet even in the rain. Bigfoot, the new polysteel radio, only from Goodyear. John McKay, three national titles. He's been to this Rose Bowl now. This is his eighth appearance here. In that confusion, the teams did not change goals. We didn't know whether the first quarter was over or not. We told you it was nothing, nothing. It's three, nothing, USC. And Ohio State is a first down on its 41-yard line. Using Bashnagel in motion a lot. That's the fullback, Johnson. And Johnson hips to the 43-yard line of Ohio State. Richard Wood, Batman, they call him, made the stop there. Occurred a comment I think worthy to make is that Dick Mack, number 69, and you talked about earlier, is playing the center, playing against Otha Bradley, a very tough assignment. Steve Myers is playing guard. They're a second down eight. Ash Nagel again in motion. Green pitching out to Griffin. Griffin over the 50, rides it into USC territory. Dale Mitchell, the outside linebacker hitting. That's the first time they've been able to spring Archie Griffin for any yardage. He broke the Big Ten rushing mark midway in his junior year of a career of Otis Armstrong. You saw two beautiful fakes, one directly into the line. The next one coming to the off-tackle hole by the fullback, Arch Griffin, going to the outside. First down, Ohio State on the USC 48. Bashnagel again moving in motion. He may be changing a play here. There's a pitch out to Griffin, 45. And Griffin's out of bounds. Chased out by Richard Wood. Said he was going to play the game of his life today, his last game for USC. Very active linebacker. Kurt, a thing when you've got it going now, slightly, not as yet as effectively as I'm, I know Ohio State would like to get it going. They cannot run up, they're going wide. They're in second, short situation. They got a lot of speed out here to the side. That's Len Willis, the man out of the flanker. Second down four. Up the middle goes Pete Johnson. Who weighs 244 pounds. His coach Woody Hayes said he is not a good practicer, but a good game player. He was tackled by Art Riley, number 87. We're going to have time out. It's Pete Bartosik, a tight end, and Woody's looking over now. If it's uh, a short yardage to go for a first down, he'll send the second tight end into the game for more blocking power. He's short by just a couple of inches. Also, that second tight end is their second leading receiver, so we know Bartosik can catch the football. They have a third down and inches to go on the USC 38-yard line. Bartosik is in, along with Doug France, two tight ends. There's the robust T, the full house backfield. And Green rolls out with the ball, has a first down. He was looking for the big gainer. He was looking for one that might have gone all the way. He's hoping USC was expecting a crack up the middle, and he was going to bootleg it and hope for a wide open field. But he got the first down anyway. The trick, really, we keep pointing it out, is to neutralize the middle. Neutralize number 92. Close off the big tackle, Art Riley, as they did there. Excellent fake. Go against the flow. Three to nothing, USC ahead. Archie Griffin at the 30, and he goes to the 27. And right now, let's go to Art, uh, Ross Porter on the sideline. 
Kurt, Ohio State believes that if this ground game does not pick up in a minute, they may have to go to the air. They think they can work on the right cornerback, number 23, Ron Bush, who wasn't a starter until the eighth game of the year. They have the speed in Hazel and in Willis. You might look for that. All right, Russ. Second down, two to go. Ohio State with his best march of the game. Green keeper. He's at the 20. He's inside the 15. He's still going. Fumbles the ball. And let's see who's got it. Down at the bottom of the pile. Green fumble at the 15. The officials call time. They haven't uh, given us a signal yet. Ohio State's ball. Let's see it down at the bottom of that pile. Well, we can't see. When you have a runner that himself as a quarterback can push a thousand yards, you know you've got a real asset. He's an asset. Looking at this defense, however, USC has changed slightly. It looks like you could attack them straight up at this point. I think that's Ted Smith at the bottom of the pile who recovered the fumble. First down for Ohio State on the USC 12-yard line. And hitting to the nine or eight yard line is Pete Johnson, the fullback. Number 33 is tackled by Art Riley, the right tackle, number 70. Put it on the nine yard line. It is second down, seven yards to go. Yep. USC ahead in this game, three nothing, and now Ohio State has its first serious threat. They're putting Hazel wide right. Lining up in their I formation with Bashnagel on the wing. Archie Griffin at the five, and he's down to the four-yard line. Kevin Bruce hit him, helped by Ron Bush. Acceleration is what makes a football player great. This is a great football player with a great line in front of him. He's at the line of scrimmage before the defense sees it. Archie Griffin is starting to pick up yardage now. Two tight ends in, the robust T backfield, and Johnson is stopped at the two-yard line. They had to reach the two for a first down. Charlie Phillips came up the rover, and Ron Bush the cornerback. They're going to spot it just short of the two-yard line. They look to the far sideline, and it is now coming into the game. Going out is Bartosic. Coming in is Larry Kane, 85. Fourth down and a foot to go. Fourth and a foot for Ohio State on the USC two-yard line. Ohio State is asking for quiet so they can hear green signals. 33 yards rushing for Archie Griffin. 63 yards rushing for Anthony Davis. More than likely, we're going to see Cornelius Green go straight up, either get the score or the first down. If not, it might get exciting for number 85, Dale Mitchell, to the top of your screen. Linebacker has to stop the wide play. Four linebackers are in there now for USC. Uh-oh. Now, did number 80 move Doug France, or was it encroachment? And that is a legal procedure. Doug France moved. I think, of, I'm sure it was France. They tied in on the left. He moved. He drew the USC player offside. Encroachment is five yards, a legal procedure, a costly penalty. And Woody Hayes is unhappy on that one. Encroachment is five yards, a legal procedure, a costly penalty. And Woody Hayes is unhappy on that one. Look at that. Can you read lips? I did. Now Tom Clavens, the refugee from Czechoslovakia who kicked Ohio State into the Rose Bowl with four field goals against Michigan. He made eight out of ten this year. His kick is up. Up, and the kick is no good. He missed it to the right. A 24-yard field goal is missed. He hit three over 40 against Michigan and missed the short one here, but he had an angle from the near sideline. So an illegal procedure penalty proves very costly to Ohio State, and it cost them a possible touchdown, or at least a cinch first down inside the two-yard line. 
Now we have a timeout. And now the score is still 3-0 USC. The man who'd rather drive a truck than a car. He's got a feel for trucks and a head for trucks. And he uses them both when he buys a Dodge. He checks out the payload. In a Dodge, it's big. Four-wheel drive, Dodge is famous for it. And this man can use it because he rarely does his driving all on a nice paved road. The man who'd rather drive a truck than a car. We're proud so many of them would rather drive a Dodge. Every day this tailoring business gets tougher. Hey, see that guy? Used to do his needlework, but I lost him to Farah. Why, he can walk into most any fine store and walk out in Farah slacks and a new Farah jacket. Fantastic quality and instant fit. I can't give him that. And I'm the fastest needle in town. Farah slacks and jackets. Everything about them looks tailor-made. How are you going to beat that? George Burns, Johnny Carson, Alice Cooper, and Red Fox join the Smothers Brothers in the premiere of an all-new weekly hour of music and comedy, Monday, January 13th on NBC. George Farmer pullback. Anthony Davis at tailback. First down USC on her own 20. They're ahead 3-0. 9.53 to go and a half. Davis, oh, is he belted behind the line of scrimmage. That's Neil Colsey who came up from his position, and he's hurt. He's really hurt. He hit him so hard, he hurt himself. He's at number one. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this. Both teams are fired. That's Aaron Chunky Brown moving. Bruce Ilya moving to the outside. Pete Kusick really making great penetration. And there's the hit. Colsey. Colsey coming to the uh, sideline momentarily, and we'll take some time here to tell you the score, 3-0 USC. Well, I have this, this friend, Ron, who's a very dear friend of mine, and uh, we, we met when I was uh, playing with the Celtics, and uh, he was pretending he was a basketball player, and um, I used to play, and he'd watch, and we became friends because I admired the way he watched. Bill Russell? Oh, yeah. Short guy, built like a fire plug. I know the guy. No, actually, he wasn't that bad a basketball player. Uh, he wasn't good, but he wasn't bad. He masqueraded as a player coach then. I was the coach of the team. It can now be revealed for the first time. <laughs> he's, a, he's the type of guy that you, uh, you don't introduce to anybody in polite society. Actually, I taught Bill Russell everything he knows about coaching. I made him what he is today. Nothing. He's always the same. Crazy. Good friends are for keeps, so keep in touch. Long distance is the next best thing to being there. Colsey hit uh, Anthony Davis so hard they shook him up and had to take him out. Alan Carter's now the tailback. Diggs is in motion. This is Carter, and he's just back to the 20, and that's all, or short of it. So now Ohio State is stiffing on defense. Nick Buonamici, the left tackle, tripped him up. He's number 75. And they're working on Anthony Davis down on the USC bench. He was really racked up by Neil Colsey. You know the switch they really made that I think is the interesting one is they put 55, Aaron Brown, Chunky Brown, from Warren, Ohio, a freshman, the nose guard, and that is where it's at. We'll keep our eye on him. Evidently, Woody Hayes is dissatisfied with his linebacking and his defense so far, and he's been making many changes. This is the first time they have stopped USC. Hayden running a sprint out. He's hit by Cusick. Cusick pulling down. 71 got to him around the ankles. Now, that's the best Ohio State has played on defense of any series, but that's Pete Cusick, the All-American. He had a clever remark. We asked him yesterday what he thought of the will come back of USC over Notre Dame. He said, I was watching the game. I had to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> In punt formation for the first time is Jim Lucas from Arcadia, California. He averaged 39 yards a punt. Back of the safety man is Neil Colsey. He broke this game open. <laughs> he missed the ball. He missed it. He may get a first down. He does. He missed the ball and then picked it up and ran for a first down. 
I, in, I can't conceive of that being a flat play. In golf, you keep your eye on the ball. He kept his eye on the man coming from the left. Look at that. He just ticked it. They're going to put that play in the book, Kurt, definitely. That's one of the great punt plays in Rose Bowl history. That'll match Roy Riggle's wrong way run. Look at this one. Just ticked the end of it. About a two-yard punt, he picks it up and yep. runs for a first down. Looked like an onside punt. <laughs> There, the crowd is really roaring and murmuring about that one. That'll be one of the freak plays of all time. It was a hip tip. First down, USC on their own 33. Hayden, the George, Dave Farmer, the fullback. His brother's George in pro ball. And they're still talking about that play. McKay said I had it all the way. Three to nothing, USC ahead, 7.49 to go in the first half. USC's ball on her own 36, second and seven. Ricky Bell's back in a fullback. We'll try and get some word about Anthony Davis. Out in motion goes Alan Carter. Hayden rolling right, flips the ball. And nearly intercepted there. It was meant for Bradovich and Bruce Elia nearly grabbed it off. Let's go down to Ross Porter now. Anthony Davis sustained a bruise uh, just above the left knee, about two inches above it. He is now running along the sidelines. He says he'll be back in now within a matter of minutes. And one thing, Al, you might look for is that USC appears to be keen on the Ohio State nose guard. Whatever angle he goes at, they try to go the other way, and that's one reason Hayden has been sending a man in motion lately to see how Ohio State reacts. All right, it is third down and seven. USC having trouble moving except for the freak punt for the first down. Now they have three men spread out wide. Here's a screen being set up. Look out! He is racked up. Woo! Was he hit by Jim Cope, number 91. And Ohio State is coming defensively now. That was to the fullback, Dave Farmer. Cope just laid back there and was waiting for that one. Now another punt formation, and let's see what kind of a play Jim Lucas will pull this time. <laughs> Dirk Polk hit the football. This yeah, is going be better. Cold. Neil Colsey and Doug Plank are the two deep men. Plank's up a little bit shorter. Lucas failed to kick it the last time. And his block, and he failed to kick it this time. It's recovered by Ohio State on the 17-yard line. And it's recovered by number... On the Buckeyes, and that is Max Midlam. The kicking game. Tim Fox firing in from that right side over the football. How many games you won by how you kicked the ball? One time he wins, this time he loses. Again. Watch Fox come in here now. Number 12, look at him. They had the gap open for him, and he smothers it. So Lucas has yet to really put a dent in punting. Hazel's in. Ohio State first down on the 17-yard line of USC. Green gives it to Johnson, the fullback. And he might have got to the 15 or 14. Both the Bradley, the nose guard, met him head on there. We've been talking about both eye formations and the entire first quarter and now both teams, frankly, are keying on the middle guard. Both the Bradley, 92 for USC. Chunky Brown, 55 for Ohio State. USC ahead, 3-0, 6-10 to go in the first half. Bash Nagel in motion, second down, eight. That's Archie Griffin. He spins to the 10-yard line. He's stopped by Otha Bradley and Art Riley. This man has rushed over 100 yards, 22 games in a row. So far today, he has rushed for 40 yards. He's starting to, to near target now. He was very slow starting the game, but he's been picking up momentum. Anthony Davis has 61 yards. Right now, he has a bruised leg, and he's on the USC bench. Third down, two yards to go for Ohio State. Just over the USC 10. That's Griffin and Johnson. There's a fumble. A fumble, and USC has it. Marvin Pop recovered number 24. Ohio State is making costly mistakes inside the USC 10-yard line. First a penalty, and now a fumble. The Trojans will take over. And our score is still 3-0 USC.
To show how the new Goodyear Polysteel radial tire helps reduce hydroplaning, we'll test it against an earlier steel belted radial. Here's the earlier radial photograph from below a glass plate covered with colored water. Now Bigfoot, the Polysteel radial. The photographs show part of this tire is actually riding on water. That's hydroplaning. But Bigfoot has more tread on the glass because it has eight specially designed wide grooves to help channel away water. Bigfoot, the Polysteel radial from Goodyear. America. Merrill Lynch is bullish on America. We believe America's economy has the strength to endure hard times and come back even stronger. Investments for a changing economy. Regular news on conventional and unconventional investments for today's economy. Call for your free copy. Merrill Lynch is bullish on America. Some folks say when teams are not playing for almost a month, that's why they fumble. That's not the reason here. The hitting is awfully hard. It wasn't a good handoff, and Art Riley makes a super play on Pete Johnson. All right, USC has Anthony Davis back in. Dave Farmer's a fullback ahead of him. First down for the Trojans from their five. Davis on a sprint. He's met by Steve Luke. There's a fumble, a pile up, and let's see now. Let's wait till the officials give it to us. Looks like Cusick down at the bottom of the pile. Who's got it? 75. Wanamichi. And Ohio State has the ball right back again. Okay, let's see it again. The fumble ball so far, the interception. Let's watch it. Does it look like he's got a good hold of that football? Met by Steve Luke on a perfect tackle. Pops the ball out. 75, Bonamici makes the big recovery. First down, goal to go. Ohio State on the USC 6. And running to the two-yard line is... Chip Henson, who's now come in. Harold Henson, who has scored one touchdown every nine times he's carried the ball. Champ Henson. Charles Phillips and Kevin Bruce met him there. Second down. Two to go for an Ohio State touchdown. Clock moving with 4.53 to go in the half. USC ahead, 3-0. They're in that full house tee. That's Henson, and he's over. Boy, he can, he can smell that goal line. 11 touchdowns this season. Here's a replay. Ohio State has gone ahead. Well, if you've got an All-American tackle by the name of Kurt Schumacher, you go to his home. Kurt wiped it out. Champ Henson did his thing. Woody Hayes says Jim Otis is the greatest fullback he's ever coached. Here's Henson again. There's the hole. He slithered through with power. He said uh, Jim Otis could score a touchdown down around the goal line with a broken leg. That's why I call him the greatest. Here's the kick now by Clavin. The kick is up and it's good. Go for the first time in the game. Ohio State's in the lead in the score. Ohio State 7, USC 3. Hi, guys. Hey, you're up early this Chances morning. are you never yeah, think about your underwear. Think about it. 100% cotton underwear keeps you cool and comfortable. Because 100% cotton is natural. It breathes. Cotton. The underwear fiber. It keeps you fresh and comfortable all day long. Hey, Daddy, look at me. Hey, hey, look at my big guy. When you're looking for comfort, look for the sign of cotton. The more cotton, the better you feel. Of the new personal mid-size cars, one is getting a lot of recognition. Hey, Charger! Yesterday's Dodge Charger got recognition for winning 75 racing titles. Hey, Charger! Today's Charger is a mid-size car with a style that keeps it ahead of the crowd. And it's getting recognition. Hey, Charger! Maybe too much recognition? Hey, Charger! here to remind you that I'll be back with NBC Sports starting January 5th, bringing you exciting NHL hockey. Pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network.
Kurt Gowdy and Aldi Rogatis. That's the way now they split. This is the freshman Dwight Ford coming to you. The other man is Anthony Davis. Davis will field this kick and he's going to run it out. Shot to the 10. And he nearly has his head taken off. Out around the 17 yard line. And I want to tell you right now, that's Lenny Willis. Leonard Willis, he's the fastest man on the team. And Ohio State is fired up on defense right now. And this Willis kid can fly. Looks close to a face mask, but it's not. Boy, it takes courage to run it back, and this man does it so beautifully. But not that. There's Willis, a bit happy. It was all USC in the first period. It's been Ohio State in the second quarter. Trojans ball, first down under 17. Davis and Farmer behind Pat Hayden. Diggs coming in motion. It goes to the fullback, Farmer. And he's across his 20. Out to his 22, and it was uh, Wanamichi, Cusick, Cope in there on him. Woody Hayes made some changes and adjustments back in his shirt sleeve outfit that he used to wear in blizzards. As he got older, he went to a windbreaker, but uh, today as the California sun warms up the afternoon here, here's the man that is second only to Bear Bryant in active coaching victories. Second down, five to go for USC. That's Davis in motion. Hayden is rolling out, throws the pass, and it's complete. For a first down to John McKay, J.K. McKay. Tackled by Steve Luke, and USC has a first down. Remember January 12th, NBC Super Sunday will begin at 1.30 Eastern time with a review of the season. A special one-hour program entitled NFL 74, The Championship Chase. Then at 2.30, a pregame show featuring Don Meredith, Joe Namath, Jeannie Morris, and Jack Perkins. And Super Bowl IX will follow immediately at 3 o'clock with the Steelers against the Vikings. After the game, we'll have interviews and highlights on NBC January 12th. Maiden again back. This one is a deep bomb, and it is incomplete, and there's no interference. That was to number 19, Junior Lee, and he was covered stride for stride by Steve Luke. And the USC fans thought it was interference, but the official running right down with a play, perfectly legal. Perfectly legal. Now you've got second and long. One of the, not the best down in football, second and long. Quarterbacks sometimes draw. If they do, Bruce Ilya. Uh, will be one of the people who should be looking for it. Sometimes, however, when you've got a good tight end like Obradovich, you try to hit him, number 89. J.K. McKay back in for Junior Lee. Second down 10, 7-3, Ohio State ahead. 3.26 to go in the first half. This is a draw play. Anthony Davis off that tailback draw. Is hit by Ilya, 36, and Arnie Jones, a freshman or a senior from Dayton, Ohio. We have a freshman in the lineup now at left tackle for Ohio State. Ed Beeman, number 67 of Cincinnati. There's Cusick. He uh, seems to have something wrong with his leg. Third down, five to go. USC on their 42-yard line. Alan Carter has replaced Anthony Davis at tailback. Anthony Davis has 67 yards rushing. Archie Griffin, 40 yards. Two top running backs in America this year. Although Oklahoma fans will argue about their Joe Washington. Here's a rollout. Right down the middle to O'Brien. He's got him at the 20. For the 26. Got it on the 30. He was hauled down by Steve Loop. A perfect post pattern for the tight end. What a call. He comes with the draw, and then he comes to his tight end. He uses his tight end beautifully. Obradovich hasn't caught many, but does he catch the big ones? Man hanging on him. Powerful young man. Just pulls away. That's a 31-yard pass. He sets it up. He had inside position on Fox, and then had to be hauled down by Luke. First down USC on the 27-yard line of Ohio State. Trojans are fighting the clock. They send Diggs in motion. This is the rollout. They give it off to Davis. Or to Carter. Carter picks his way, number 21, to the 22-yard line where he was upended by Tim Fox. Carter 
weighs 200 pounds. He just had the misfortune of playing behind one of the all-time USC greats, Anthony Davis. In this football game, Pat Hayden likes to use Shel Sheldon Diggs infrequently. He kind of lulls you to sleep with this young man. He's got great speed. He's also going against a tough one culture. There's Diggs setting down. A minute 40 to go in the half. Carter plunges inside the 20. They might have tagged him down right at the 20-yard line. They do. And now it's third and three. And Van Decree of Warren, Ohio. The All-American defensive end was the man that tripped him up. Here comes Dave Farmer back in with the play. And going out is Ricky Bell. Now they're getting down to crucial time. A minute, 10 seconds to go in this half. Ohio State ahead, 7-3. to three. It's third down. Three to go for USC. The rollout. Look out. He gets away. And he's spun down on the 22-yard line by the freshman, Beeman. Ed Beeman put him down. Number 67, who came in replacing Cusick. Ed Beeman. Good lateral pursuit. And Chris Lamahalu is in. Let's get another report from Ross Porter. Pete Cusick suffered a twisted knee, he said, but he'll be back in in the second half. Lima Halu will try a field goal now. He's kicked one earlier in the game. This is a 39-yard attempt. Flag goes down. Ohio State may be offside. The kick is good. 39-yard field goal by little Chris Lima Halu. Let's see what the penalty marker's about. It was offside. Ohio State, as we thought. The penalty declined by USC. 19 seconds. Now, wait a minute. USC may figure an option here. They may try and mark off this five yards and see where it winds up. 19 seconds to go. Be an interesting decision. Matt Hayden, who can think? He just went through the Rhodes Scholar examinations. One of two from California. He said it was the toughest competitive thing of his life. All oral examinations. He'll go to Oxford. Two years. And his coach, John McKay, says it's a million dollar award. He'll come out of Oxford. May not play professional football. Wants to be a lawyer. He was an English major. He is a great advertisement for college football, Pat Hayden, whose father is a salesman for a medical supply firm. Offside against Ohio State has been accepted by USC. Now they have the ball on the 17-yard line with the first down and only 19 seconds to go. So they have turned down the sure three points that they had. They have, another, they have another shot at that, Kurt. Again, the big change Ohio State made is right in the middle with number 55 in there, Aaron Brown. First down, 19 seconds to go and a half. They gave up the three points. Hayden throws to the sideline and broken up by Ken Q and the linebacker, number 54. 17 seconds remaining in the half. They were trying to hit John McKay in the sideline pattern. He'll be a marked man because inside the 20, they go to McKay who plays a lot like Fred Belitnikov. He's not overly fast, but he has sure feet, can get open, and has gluey hands. Another great asset always is when you have a back that can catch the football. He can always bring him out of the backfield. Second down, 10. USC on the Ohio State 17. In motion is Carter. There it is down the middle. It's complete at the four-yard line. Tim Fox made the tackle and Obradovich the tight end. And uh, here it is. The first the down. End zone low. The tight end. What a valuable weapon. Boy, he's made some big catches. Timeout by USC. They stopped the clock with 11 seconds to go in the first half. They have one timeout left. And Hayden wants to be sure of that. One left. Chuck Arobia and Fred Kasichian are the only two football players in USC history who've ever been in the scholarship 
degree that Hayden has been in. He started the season slowly passing, but he wound up strong. And by the way, he joined a select group of young men recently when he was named one of the 33 winners of a $1,000 NCAA postgraduate scholarship. 11 of those postgraduate scholarships playing in seven ball games. Alabama's Randy Hall tonight. Notre Dame's Pete Demerle and Reggie Burnett. They'll be seen in the Orange Bowl later here on NBC. You saw Ricky Bell and Pat Aiden walk in. A very obvious strategy. It's almost so obvious that you think he's not going to give it to Ricky Bell. He might and then call a timeout. Four linebackers in for Ohio State. First and goal to go for USC. Aiden flares it out to Carter. He's being trapped. He's going for a loss at the seven-yard line. Four seconds. And USC has called its last time out of the half. Now, the field goal team is coming on again. And Chris Lamahalu, who kicked a 39-yard field goal for three points, and then USC discarded the three points when they had a penalty on the field goal and took a first down. Now let's see if Lama Halu, this will be a more difficult angle for him. It's going to be from the near sideline, and it's on the seven. It'll be about four, about a 24-yard shot. He's so cool, Kurt. Uh, Kurt it's, it's kind of hard to believe. 5'5", five, five, there he is, 130 pounds. 5'5", five, five, 130 pounds, and just as cool as can be. He uh, made 38 out of 42 extra points, 9 out of 14 field goals. And he has a difficult angle here now. Much more than the 39-yard one. He'll be spotted on the 14. <coughs> pardon me, it's a 24-yard attempt. It's up. And the kick is no good. He missed it. So they gave up the three points they had in the bag. They gamble to go for a seven point, and that's the end of the half with the score, Ohio State seven and USC three. Texaco understands what rough roads can do to tires and shock absorbers. And Texaco understands that lights, a radio, or faulty voltage regulator can take the spark out of a battery. Texaco understands what the wind, sun, and rain do to wipers. And that headlights can burn out with age. And Texaco understands what road dust and dirt do to a car's air filter. Driving takes a lot out of a car. That's why your independent Texaco retailer wants to help. So bring him your car with its worn wipers, tired batteries, and balding tires. He wants to replace whatever needs replacing and get your car ready for another day. At Texaco, we are working to keep your trust. of last year's Stanley Cup Final. Who'll take the cup this year? Find out when the NHL returns to NBC Sunday, January 5th. We'll have halftime activities in just a moment. Right now, we pause for station identification. John Davidson and Olivia Newton-John on the Mac Davis Show tomorrow night. You know, it makes us sound like we don't know anything. Hey, 
A field goal by Lima Halo, 30 yards. And a touchdown by Champ Benson of two yards is the scoring 7-3 Ohio State. And now for halftime entertainment, first, the Ohio State marching band. From the Ohio State University marching band. other schools in the Big Ten that are still wishing they were here. Maybe this will help.
A wish come true is a winning football tradition. Another OSU tradition is performed today for the eighth time in the Rose Bowl. The incomparable Script Ohio. Time activities will continue in a moment. Right now, we pause for station identification. Without a truck, Sonny and Will find it tough to keep moving on tomorrow night on NBC. sneaked up on us.
The 1975 Rose Bowl game is brought to you by Texaco and the many thousands of independent Texaco retailers and distributors in all 50 states. By your Chrysler Plymouth dealers who invite you to see Cordoba, the new small Chrysler. By Goodyear, the makers of Bigfoot, the new polished steel radial tire. It keeps its feet even in the rain. And by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated St. Louis, Brewers of Budweiser. When you say Budweiser, you said it all. And right now, we'll say the score at halftime, 7-3, Ohio State. Now the USC Trojan marching band. Ladies and gentlemen, to celebrate the new year, the Trojan Marching Band salutes people throughout America who make their own kind of music. As the Trojan Marching Band says, I've got the music in me. have traditionally expressed themselves through the music of jazz. The Trojan Marching Band now features its trumpet section to the modern jazz sounds of Maynard Ferguson.
marching band as they dance to the music. afternoon, there was a verdict in the Watergate trial in Washington, D.C. Here with a special report from the courthouse in Washington is NBC's news correspondent, Carl Stern. trial and 15 hours of deliberation, the Watergate jury found four of the defendants guilty in connection with the Watergate cover-up. John Mitchell, H.R. Haldeman, John Ehrlichman, and Robert Mardian. One defendant, Kenneth Parkinson, was acquitted. When the verdict was announced, Mr. Ehrlich, uh, Mr. Haldeman came out first and had this reaction. H.R. Haldeman now. Simply to say that there's only one human being in the world who knows to an absolute moral certainty the truth of my innocence or guilt. I know that legally and morally I am totally innocent of each of the charges that's been brought here. And with that certainty, I can live with myself and I can move ahead now uh, to see that as this process continues, the truth ultimately does become known and become understood. I have the full conviction that ultimately it will. And uh, with that, I intend to move ahead uh, in the days ahead on the process of appeal within the judicial system. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Haldeman. Thank you, Mr. Haldeman. Could get as much as 8 to 25 years in prison. The next defendant convicted who emerged was Mr. Ehrlichman. He was found guilty today on all five counts. He now faces the maximum of 25 years in prison. date was set for sentencing. All of the defendants who were convicted will remain uh, free on their own recognizance. Uh, former Attorney General John Mitchell left the courthouse in his limousine. Uh, he was asked for his reaction, uh, what he would do now. He said he thought he would just uh, have to go to the moon uh, for sure, that there was nothing else for him to do. Repeating our, our news at this hour, it is that four men were convicted in connection with the Watergate cover-up. Mitchell, Haldeman, Ehrlichman, and Mardian. This is Carl Stern, NBC News at the Federal Courthouse in Washington. Now back to the Rose Bowl and Kurt Gowdy. And with a salute, make your own kind of music for 1975. Both fans outstanding as usual. At halftime, Ohio State and USC. Now the overall shot from the NBC telecopter. The score is Ohio State 7 and Southern California 3 as we get ready for the second half kickoff in the 1975 Rose Bowl game. It's going to take better care of the people who buy Dodge and Chrysler Plymouth cars. What do I think of the new Dodge? You can depend on it. And that new 12 months unlimited mileage warranty, you can depend on that too. I put a lot of miles in the car, so the unlimited mileage warranty on a new Chrysler really clinched it for me. You still have to take care of normal maintenance, like wiper blades and filters, but they take care of the really big stuff. I've decided on a new Plymouth. Beautiful car. Beautiful warranty. Look, for the first 12 months of use, any Chrysler Motors Corporation dealer will fix, without charge for parts or labor, any part of our 1975 passenger cars we supply, except tires, which proves defective in normal use regardless of mileage. That's it. That's the clincher. It's going to take better care of the people who buy Dodge and Chrysler Plymouth cars. Exclusively on NBC. Sunday, January 12th, Super Bowl Nine. The Pittsburgh Steelers meet the Minnesota Vikings. There'll be exciting action and special programs. It all begins at 1.30 Eastern Time. Super Bowl Nine from NBC Sports, number one in live coverage. USC is going to receive on your left to open the second half. Ohio State 
Well, kick on your right. USC has won the battle of statistics. The trail's on the scoreboard. The Trojans have 13 first downs to four for Ohio State. They have outrushed Ohio State 130 to 100. Total yardage, a big margin for USC. 213 to 113. Two turnovers charged to Southern Cal, one to Ohio State. And in the heralded battle of Anthony Davis and Archie Griffin, Davis has the edge, 67 total yards in the first half. Even though he missed some playing time with an injury, Archie Griffin had 44 yards. Three points will be remembered a long time. Some coaches say always take the points. The block punt, the second down and short yardage pass by Hayden that was in intercepted by Colsey. The fumble that, uh, by Arch Griffin and then the fumble right back by Anthony Davis when it looked like USC was out of trouble. Tom Skoldany kicking off. And it's a deep boot. Coming out with it is Alan Carter to the 10. And he is down on his 17-yard line. And that's Tim Fox, who's been all over the field today. He's down there to help make the tackle. And Skoldany is one of the few place kickers you see who also goes down and makes tackles. So it USC's ball now, first down on their 17. They'll have Hayden at quarterback. Alan Carter is going to be the tailback. Anthony Davis evidently is not right physically. The fullback will be Dave Farmer. McKay and Diggs are the wide receivers. Obradovich to tight end. Those men are at the skill positions. Hayden on first down on a quick give to Dave Farmer. On the blast, there's a fumble. And let's see who's got it. USC still has it. All right, let's take another look at it. They're driving off the ball real well. A good block there. Van Decree moves to the inside, grabbing the football from Farmer. I don't think you have it, Mr. Decree. <laughs> you do, but a little late. Second down five for the Trojans. Powell and Knutson are the tackles. Davis and Bain the guards. McCaffrey's at center. Ricky Bell's a fullback. He just brought in a play. Big Cusick's back in the game, by the way. There's a long pass that is nearly intercepted by Neil Colsey. As the tenant predicts, this Colsey can really cover in that secondary. He certainly can. He has that rover ability. Charles Phillips also has it for the uh, USC Trojans, but Colsey impresses, and Kurt Early made some of the hardest tackles that we've seen. Ricky Bell goes out. Dave Farmer back in as a fullback. And Dwight Ford, a highly touted freshman, is now the tailback. He's the heir apparent to Anthony Davis next year at tailback. Dwight Ford, number 22. A third down play. Five to go. Here's a draw play to Ford. He has blazing speed. And he is hit at the 25 and down by Jim Cope. Number 91, they just don't get outside Cope. He's refused to let them get outside today. You're seeing one of the reasons why the attack at this three or five man line, depending on how you think uh, Jim Cope and Van Decree play. Cope can either come or be a linebacker. That play, he was waiting, he was not coming, he was really playing linebacker. Now let's see if Jim Lucasen finally hit the ball with a putt. He missed it once. And picked it up, ran for a first down the second time he had a block. And that one's nearly blocked, but not quite. That punts away, and it's going into Ohio State territory. And out of bounds, they'll mark it up along the 45-yard line of Ohio State. Buckeyes ball with a first down. If I had to sense what might be happening now, I'd have to say that USC fans ought to be yelling defense. You get the feeling that they're a trifle down and this is a very big defensive series Cornelius Green's the quarterback number seven Archie Griffin the tailback 45 Champ Henson the fullback 38 rolling out is Green he throws it's complete and he is three for three in the game he hit six out of eight last year and that's the tight end Doug Franson caught the ball last year with a tight end named Pugic that caught four of Green's passes Green Trying to open up USC now, a first down, Ohio State. 
on the Ohio State 42. Len Willis is the flanker outside. And they tried to blast up the middle, and it doesn't go far. That's number 85, Dale Mitchell, the outside linebacker who crossed over to make the hit on Archie Griffin. Actually, the USC defense in the interior has been doing a more effective job in the middle than the Ohio State team. Ohio's doing the better job to the outside. Corny Green can pull it down. He was wide open on that pass play before. Second down, nine to go for the Buckeyes. Green with a rollout. He can move. He goes to the 40. He's at the 35. He has a first down. He's out of bounds on the 31 of USC. Oak the Bradley drove him out. Ted Smith was leading the way, the left guard, the blocker. Richard Wood from Elizabeth, New Jersey. A lot of speed. They say run at speed, run away from strength. This is the speed of Rich Wood. But it's a big gain, and Corny Green, Kirk, could be a real factor this half. Well, he's certainly been a factor so far with his passing and running. First down, Ohio State ahead, 7-3 early in the third quarter. There goes Griffin. He just tripped up when he started to go somewhere. Richard Wood running down. Okay, we're seeing the Buckeye bullet. I like to call him that. Small, built like a miniature George Foreman, but attacks like an O.J. Simpson. Real speed. Bill Ezzo for the first time in the game. Number eight is a wide receiver, a split in. In a second down, four. Green bootlegging again. Shoots that pass to Doug France, and he has it. And the tight end swirling around. Red-shirted men on him. That was a remarkable catch. Green threw that ball hard. Now you have some hard feelings there. Art Riley, they have to pull him away, and that's Richard Wood separating. Number 52 is Steve Myers. He has a broken wrist that he's playing. Woody Hayes has calmed down out there. I'll get excited, but not you boys. Look at Woody. <laughs> we were talking about how Pat Hayden likes to use his tight end. Well, Corny Green knows how to use him real well, too. This man does it with a flare. Beautiful catch. I get a kick out of Woody. He can tear up the yard marker, but the players have to stay calm. Bashnagel out to the right. There's a give back to the fullback, Champ Henson. If Henson scores another touchdown in this game, he will break the all-time Ohio State touchdown record. Art Riley made the tackle on Champ Henson, and the ball now is spotted on the eight-yard line of USC, second down, seven for Ohio State. The play that seems so tough, really, to be stopped is that simple toss to Arch Griffin going wide to the right. The fullback lead, the wingback block. Ed Powell is out. Mario Salato has come in, a freshman linebacker. Griffin, fumble, and that's an Ohio State ball. Ohio State has recovered. That's the second fumble for Archie Griffin, and Art Riley has it, number 70. All right, let's see it, low from behind. A big fumble for Arch. He has it, number 70. All right, let's see it, low from behind. A big fumble for Arch. They're arguing the ball was late. Corny Green was arguing. The official is right there. It's difficult for us to see it. Arch's second fumble curve. Ohio State has made three costly mistakes inside the USC 10 today. Two fumbles and a penalty. First down now. Hayden gives the ball to Alan Carter. Carter's at the nine. And it doesn't appear if we're going to see much of Anthony Davis in the second half. Bruce Ilya and Nick Buonamici ganged up for that tackle on the Trojan nine at second down eight. Anthony Davis had a bruised leg midway in the second period after he picked up 60 some yards. He was on his way to a remarkable rushing game. The report is that Davis will be back in. That's Carter again. And he's to the 11-yard line of USC. Ken Kuhn, the outside linebacker, at number 75. Al, the sophomore, Buonamici, 75, played himself a defensive tackle game. 
realizing that you're having some punting problems, Pat Hayden may have to put the football up. He may do it with some reluctance. Neil Colsey has twice come very close to it. If he does, 46, Steve Luke, again, might be the target. These two teams, high-scoring teams in a low-scoring game, surprising to us. 7-3, Ohio State. In motion is Carter. Hayden will flip it out of the end zone, right at the goal line. The pass is good to J.K. McKay. Grabbed off by Luke. And I believe they're calling a completion for USC. Cusick. All right, that's 91, Cope. He made the hit. Dropping back off his right end position, and they called it a completion to McKay. And it'll be a Trojan first down. McKay's second reception of the game. In the middle again, number 42, Arnie Jones. Arnie built more like a linebacker than a nose guard, though he's 240 pounds. He's six foot tall. The trick early, when Anthony Davis was running so well, was attacking right there. White board, the freshman, the tailback. Ricky Bell ahead of him. Here's Diggs in motion. First down, USC from their 25. Oh, he ran. And that's Ed Beeman. Ed Beeman hit him, the freshman, number 67. Okay, defense. Such a part of football. A good picture of it. Jones moving to the inside. Beeman, who's doing so well, plays off the fullback block, makes the tackle. Wadamichi's at one tackle, Beeman a freshman at the other, Pete Cusick is still injured, they're all American tackle, that's Anthony Davis, he may be back in here, it's on the 24 yard line of the Trojans, second and 11, they're trailing seven to three, eight and a half to go in the third period, roll out by Hayden to get away from the pass rush, intercepted by Colsey, he may go, he's at the 15, he's at the 10 and he's out of bounds, how cold he waits to play the ball. He is incredible. You know what he knew? He knew that Pat Hayden will go to his tight end once too many times. He thought he saw a hole, and the hole suddenly closed down. The tight end is going out. Colsey plays it magnificently. Right in front of Obradovich. This is instinct, and this is thinking. 21-yard return by All-American defensive back Neil Colsey. Last year, late in the third quarter, he ran a punt back 56 yards to the USC 9. But USC ahead 21-20 and broke the game open. Now this ball is being brought back to the 24-yard line of USC. Dead ball foul. And for spiking the ball, Colsey has a 15-yard penalty call. But USC has given up the ball now. That's their third turnover. Colsey's intercepted two passes today. First down, Ohio State on the USC 24. Archie Griffin, he's been fairly well contained today. Art Riley, the right tackle. Incidentally, it is now second down and goal to go. Second and 22 for an Ohio State touchdown. With a quarterback like Corny Green, you've got to talk about the run. With speed like Len Willis, you think about the pass. Willis is flank left. There goes Bashnagel to spread him out to the right. Second down, 22 for a touchdown. Green getting out of the pocket. He's hit it still away. Throws in desperation. Intercepted. And that ball is intercepted by Danny Bruce. Danny Reese has it. Now the teams are exchanging the football. Reese intercepted five passes this year, and he made a great play of that one after this desperation pass. We saw a fumble by Griffin. We saw an interception by Colsey. We see a desperation effort here by Green, and we see another interception. A little pat up in the air. Big play, big play. And after the two teams exchanged the ball, the score is Ohio State 7, USC 3. One hundred percent cotton shirts and jeans are Saturday morning. Comfortable and cool. A cotton shirt is Saturday night. Comfortable and elegant. Cotton is a quiet weekend. Warm and cozy. 
cotton is a business meeting when you could be hot under the collar. But you're not, because cotton breathes. 100% cotton, the shirt and jeans fiber. When you're looking for comfort, look for the sign of cotton. The more cotton, the better you feel. You could see it moving along the ridge, then hugging the roads of the Golden Gate Bridge. Bigfoot. Introducing the Goodyear Polysteel Radial. Two steel belts and eight wide grooves to help prevent water from building up under the tire. Now it pulled out and passed a 20-ton load, squeezing out water, whitening the road. The perfect time not to skid or sway. That Goodyear Polysteel Radio is here to stay. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Keeps its feet even in the rain. A dying man's last words lead to adventure and mystery on the high seas. Ralph Bellamy heads an all-star cast in The Log of the Black Pearl, an NBC Saturday night movie at 9, 8 central. The USC mascot, Tommy Trojan III, watching his team line up a first down on the USC 24. Three turnovers in each team. Ohio State's had two turnovers in the third quarter. Hayden fires to McCain, and the pass is good. McKay's getting position in those sidelines. They're attacking Steve Luke. Not that Luke isn't that good a cornerback. They sure don't want to try Colsey again. So they're going with the, the safer pass, that down and out, good distance, and throwing to the outside. Nine out of 17 for Pat Hayden. First down, USC on their 42. Seven to three. Ohio State ahead. Seven and a half minutes to go in this third period. Lots of time. And he squares up. And that's right on target again to the coach's son, J.K. McKay. Okay, and this is Dred. Kurt said there were two men right there. Look at that, how close it was. Ken Kewen. He's got him on the move. Here's another angle, Kurt. J.K. McKay, the senior, and the father-son and coach-player relationship ends here today. But there might be another Southern Cal combination in a few years. Another Coach McKay's boys, Rich, is a high school quarterback and a good one. Junior Lee has gone in now. That's Farmer, the fullback, countering back to the 32-yard line of Ohio State, where Ed Beeman, playing a remarkable game for a freshman, ended Well, you know what? is so interesting and both quarterbacks are doing it well they're calling that exceptionally fine game pat hayden saw the way this defense was being deployed he also saw the opening up the middle he came with the pass attacked the middle he may try it again second down five usc on the ohio state 34 they marked him with his knee on the 34. that's carter carter spins to the 29. Michi brought him down. Look at this uh, statistic in the third quarter. Ohio State in 11 games this year in the third quarter scored 110 points to three for the opponents. That was SMU. They got a mighty field goal. Third down. A half yard to go. It's on the 29 and a half yard line. Southern Cal in possession, Ohio State's ahead, 7-3. And Hayden has the first down as he sneaks for it. File up there by Ohio State's Arnie Jones, 42, and Ken Kuhn. On Saturday, January 11th, from Mobile, Alabama, they'll still measure this, I guess. The college uh, bowl game most highly regarded by pro scouts. The Senior Bowl game this year featuring two of the nation's top quarterbacks, Steve Bartoski from California and David Hum from the University of Nebraska. NBC Sports will carry the Senior Bowl. Number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Saturday, January 11th. We might get an opportunity to show you how Van Decree is playing the wide side of the field. He's number 88. He has the ability and the strength of a defensive end and the capacity also to play linebacker. Jay McKay McKay's back in the game. He's split wide to the left. First down. Roll out by Hayden. 
Now he decides to run it. He's over the 25 to the 23 yard line of Ohio State. That's Jones, 42. And that freshman again, Ed Beeman, 67. Actually, on that, Van Decree did a fine job. He played it to the outside. And what Van Decree wants to do is to force it back to the inside. He's hoping for help. Plays off the one blocker by Sheldon Dix. Plays off Farmer. Comes back to the inside, and he gets help there. Number 22, Ricky Bell's in his fullback. McKay is shuttling his plays in with his fullback. And now USC calls a timeout. So the setup here with 4.45 to go in the third quarter is Ohio State 7, USC 3. Just about everybody at one time or another dreams of a trip to Europe, but just how many of us can afford it? I'd like to show you what you can do on this side of the Atlantic for less than seven dollars. This is the old country now being built by Bush Gardens at Williamsburg, Virginia, near Washington, D.C. And this book will help you plan a visit this spring when the old country opens. For your free copy, write Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, Virginia, and start planning to join us in the old country on this side of the Atlantic. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Kurt Gowdy and Eldy Rogatis from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Second down, four to go for USC. Oh. As Ricky Bell, he was tripped up suddenly at the 21-yard line by Nick Buonamici. Bell, a sophomore from Los Angeles, 215 pounds. That was almost a big misdirection play. You start the flow left, and you hit the play behind it. His pullbacks must be getting tired running on and off the field. Third down, two. Dave Farmer now replaces Bell. 4.15 to go in the quarter. 7-3, Ohio State. Quite a march here USC has going. To the sideline, no good. Thrown high and away from J.K. McKay. He was covered by Colsey, and that was in Pat Hayden's mind, Mr. Colsey. He's grabbed off two interceptions today and plays those receivers like glue. And now, Chris... Lima Halu comes in. He has kicked a field goal of 30 yards in this game. He kicked another one of 39 yards that USC declined. They had three points in the bag and declined it. They got a penalty on it went and took a first down. And this kick, there goes the flag down. This kick is up. It is no good to the left, but we have a penalty marker down. All right, that's uh, holding against USC. It's declined by Ohio State. And the Buckeyes will put the ball in play. So that drive of USC went from their 24 to the Ohio State 21. SC still has the edge of statistics, but trails on the scoreboard. Again, they're fighting, and the errors by Ohio State have kept them really in the football game. Before Ohio State breaks out of their huddle to go to the attack, we'll tell you the score again. 7-3, Ohio State. For 50 years, the name Chrysler has stood for an automobile of very special accomplishment and luxury. Accomplishment that today is reflected in the 1975 Chrysler New Yorker Brougham. Luxury, symbolized by the proud bearing of the 1975 Imperial Le Baron. An automobile that sets its own distinctive standards of elegance, comfort, and convenience. And now, that tradition of excellence graces a new Chrysler. Cordoba, 
Cordoba is an automobile of beauty and harmony. Smaller, but so very luxurious, and yet so very affordable. The Chrysler's, now excellence in three sizes. Woody Hayes, a head coach for 28 seasons at Denison University, Miami of Ohio, and Ohio State. Right now, his team has the first down on their own 20-yard line. That's the fullback, Champ Henson. Art Riley, Phoenix, Illinois. Otha Bradley, number 92. Interesting story right now with Ohio State. Archie Griffin is in danger of having his 100-yard game streak broken. In this game, he has 52 yards. 22 games in a row, he's gained 100 yards or more. But he's been pretty well throttled today by USC. Second down, eight. Hey, here he goes. Starting out wide, and Bashnagel comes back with it. They faked to him up the middle and gave it to Bashnagel coming back. Ron Bush and Dale Mitchell brought him down. One thing about Arch Griffin, though his 100-yard game might be threatened, he can get the rest of that very quickly. You know, they're going to the outside. They're not giving to Arch Griffin, but he has that great acceleration. Dave Hazel is set outside right. Roll out by Green. He had Hazel wide open. I didn't see him. Now he's running. And he stopped short of the first down, and he's 28. Hazel was wide open, and he didn't let it go to him. Bradley and Riley pursued him across the field and brought him down. You've used the name Bradley an awful lot today, Kurt. Yeah, he's, he's been, been in a, a lot of plays. Goldaney will punt. And back are Marvin Cobb and Charles Phillips. With 2.20 to go in the third period, and Ohio State ahead 7-3. A high floater, good hang time, fair catch called. USC's ball first down in their 28, and right now, Ross Porter. Anthony Davis suffered the bruised knee in the first half. Now, the word is that Davis has at least bruised ribs. He may have cracked ribs, and it may be that AD may not be back this afternoon. If he has cracked ribs, he probably won't be. Thank you very much, Ross. We thought he was injured more seriously than reported in the first half. Alan Carter, the backup tailback, and Dave Farmer are the running backs behind Pat Hayden. Southern Cal's ball in their 28 with the first down. They're trailing seven to three. This is Carter. And he's up the near sideline, still going. Fine run by Carter. He has a first down at the USC 40. That's really tight rope walking the sideline. Tight rope walking the sidelines, a little toss, a good lead by Farmer, a good lead by the guard, and that's Farmer just making enough of a block. Good balance. Southern Cal on their 40 with a first down, a defensive battle today. We thought it might be a high scoring game. These two teams know each other well, though. Their third meeting in a row. Carter, and he flashes to his 47. This Van Decree made the tackle on him. I want to remind you that NBC's third year of National Hockey League coverage will get underway Sunday at 4 o'clock Eastern time with the St. Louis Blues meeting the Buffalo Sabres and heralding the return of Peter Puck, along with other features on NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Second down, three. Trojans on their 47. We're in the last minute and a half of the third quarter. Coming through is Farmer. He's at the 35, the 30. He's inside the 20. And the Trojans have a big first down. Dave Farmer, Jr., who averaged seven and a half yards a carry this year. The average, not the best average, the best direct. Carter goes one way. John McKay said this man has exceptional ability. And you see it right here. Good movement, excellent leg action, big play. The hold is still there, Kurt, up the middle. Ricky Bell's in a pullback. Aaron Brown has now gone to right tackle for Ohio State. First down, USC. Aiden to Carter, 20. He's 
to the 15. They spot him at the 16 short. Alan Carter stepping in for the injured Anthony Davis in the second half. And right now, starting to generate some power from that, that USC tailback slot. In that secondary curve, we've been talking about Obradovich. I have the feeling they will not try, at least they should not try to go against Colsey. They may try to bring it over the middle. If they do, Duck Plank will have to be looking for it, number 28. Now Mosey Tatupo has gone in a pullback. That's Carter. And look at that cutback. He's hit by Rich Parsons. 24, Steve Luke 46, and Ed Beam in the tackle. USC now is on the 10-yard line of Ohio State. They're getting close. Third down and a yard to go. Big offensive margin. There are five seconds to go in the quarter. USC has rolled up the statistics today. And that's the end of the third quarter of the 1975 Rose Bowl game. The score, Ohio State 7, USC 3. 1956, grooves are cut into runways to help channel water away. 1966, grooves are cut into freeways to help improve traction on wet roads. 1975, Goodyear presents the new polysteel radio, Bigfoot, with eight wide grooves specially designed to help channel water away and the high traction rubber that really grips on roads wet or dry. Bigfoot, the polysteel radio, keeps its feet even in the rain. Bank robbers want a bike they can depend on. One that starts quickly. Has a quiet, powerful four-stroke engine. Handles beautifully and goes and goes on just a little gas. That's why many people who want bikes they can depend on choose Honda. And, fortunately, so do many police departments. Hey, no wonder it took us so long. They got a new Honda 360. Put the cuffs on there. Kurt Gowdy, Aldi Rogatis for NBC take you into the fourth period. USC is on the Ohio State 10 yard line with third and a yard to go. USC has had drives in this last quarter of 55 and 62 yet failed to score. Wanamichi and Beeman are back at the tackles for Ohio State. Carter and Bell are the running backs. It is to Carter and he should have a first down very close to it. They may measure anyway, just to be sure. They are. Take nothing for granted. Aaron Brown and Steve Luke tripped him up there. Wanamichi 75. That's Pat Hayden, number 10, in the Cardinal jersey. What is it? First down. Well, you know, when the Indiana colony settled here 100 years ago, they used an Indian word, Pasadena, meaning crown of the valley. And Pasadena's added many jewels in that crown as you look over the stadium today and the surrounding countryside. It's becoming the headquarters city of the 70s. World and corporate headquarters abound in Pasadena. First down and goal to goal. Southern Cal on the Ohio State nine-yard line. Ohio State ahead, 7-3. We've just begun the fourth period. The pitch out to Carter. Running the student body sweep, and it, the student body was thinned out rather quickly by Tim Fox, number 12, who's a hitter in that secondary. Everybody on this field's a hitter today. This is a football game. It's a surprise, frankly. We thought it was going to be a high-scoring football game after 42-21, 42-17. But no, it's been a great battle between the 10s, not the 20s. Total yardage in this game. 356 for USC, 169 for Ohio State. USC has doubled the offensive yardage on the Buckeyes. Hayden will look the field over. There it is. And it's a touchdown. Neil Colsey. Obradovich beat Colsey that time. All right, let's take a look at this. The tight end. How he's used Obradovich today. Fires it to the outside. 
calls he played it a bit casually or at least it appeared that way and a big catch oh a 62 yard drive or 72 yard drive and now the kick by lama halu and it's good and usc has stormed back to take the lead here early in the fourth period while they line up for the kickoff, it is now USC 10 and Ohio State 7. Pride, the very cornerstone of a new automobile. Cordova, the new small Chrysler. Here is the warmth of thickly cushioned contour seats, available even in fine Corinthian leather. So very luxurious, yet surprisingly affordable. Cordova is engineered with great pride to be a Chrysler. Cordova, the new small Chrysler. A lot of people call me cheap, wrong, thrifty. It's like the time I called Xerox, collect, and found out about their 4500 copier. It's for the copy sides of the same sheet of paper. All the map. Then sort copy. Xerox 45. Hundred saves me paper. I think costs time and money. Now you tell me, is that cheap or thrift? George Burns, Johnny Carson, Alice Cooper, and Red Fox join the Smothers Brothers in the premiere of an all-new weekly hour of music and comedy, Monday, January 13th on NBC. The touchdown pass, Hayden to Abradovich. Pat Hayden threw four touchdown passes. And that memorable come from behind Southern Cal victory over Notre Dame to tie an all-time USC game record. The kick is coming to Bashnagel on the six-yard line. Oh, what a coverage that was. Great coverage by number 33, Ricky Odom. That was the last scoring drive by USC. USC has 365 total yards in this game to 169 for Ohio State. The Trojans have doubled the offensive yardage. First down, Ohio State now on their 18-yard line. Ash Nagel in motion. Let's see if Ohio State opens up or goes to their ground game. Green running the option play. And the fired up Trojans banging down along the 19 and 20-yard line. That was Gary Jeter and Oak the Bradley. Bradley, a nose guard, has nosed his way into a lot of plays today. Boy, he sure has. And that defensive unit has really come on. Now, really, it's the offensive line of Ohio State. They must realize they've not that much time. Number one could be at stake. There's another game at the Orange Bowl after this. Pete Johnson at fullback. Bash Nagel in motion. Green going back to Willis. Willis deep, way over his head. He was covered downfield by Ron Bush, the right cornerback, the sophomore. You just saw the fastest man to ever play football for Ohio State, Len Willis, streak down the field, but no dice. Third and eight for Ohio State on their 20-yard line, and they're trailing now 10-3. to three. Bill Ezzo goes in for Willis as you see him come to the bench. Once again, that situation where the big defensive rush, is, rush will come. You might see a blitz. You might see an inter interception. Ash Nagel in motion. Fake draw play. Trying to set up something. Green's running. 20, 25. He has, oh, what a run this there. Great play by Green. He did it himself. He came out of the pocket. He can run for a quarterback, I'll tell you. Very nifty feet. Very nifty. A view from the end zone. A quarterback in trouble. His receivers are covered. He gets the big rush. Jeter is coming from the inside. Mitchell from the out. Art Riley pursuing. Fancy legs with the white shoes. Well, he went 23 yards and took Ohio State out of trouble. They would have had to relinquish the ball had he not made that play. First down now. Here's a rollout left. He sets up. He throws a little dump off to Griffin. Griffin's at the 50. Streaks away to the 40. And he's down to the 35 for a first down. Or the 36. Marvin Cobb 
and George Stewart, who's now in a right tackle, brought him down. We talk about quarterbacks. Well, one thing you have to do is have poise. If your principal receiver is covered, go to your safety valve. Not a bad way to have one either. Arch Griffin moves off for Ken Bruce. Good balance. First down, Ohio State on the 35-yard line of Southern Cal. In two plays, Ohio State's moved from the 20, their own, to the Southern Cal 35. Griffin's over the 30 to the 28-yard line. Archie Griffin, one of seven football-playing sons of Mr. and Mrs. James Griffin of Columbus, Ohio. James Jr. played at Muscombe College. Larry played at Louisville. Darrell played at halfback at Kent State this past season. Ray was a backup for older brother Archie at Ohio State. He's just a freshman. Duncan is an All-State high school football player, and Keith, the youngest one, may be the best of all. Pete Johnson, the fullback. Seven football-playing sons in the Griffin family. First down, Ohio State. And they're now on the 23-yard line of USC. quarter of 55 and 62 yet failed to score. Wanamichi and Beeman are back at the tackles for Ohio State. Carter and Bell are the running backs. It is to Carter and he should have a first down very close to it. They may measure anyway just to be sure they are. Take nothing for granted. Aaron Brown and Steve Luke ripped him up there. Wanamichi, 75. That's Pat Hayden, number 10, in the Cardinal jersey. <laughs> what is it? First down. Colony settled here 100 years ago. They used an Indian word, Pasadena, meaning crown of the valley. And Pasadena's added many jewels in that crown as you look over the stadium today and the surrounding countryside. It's becoming the headquarters city of the 70s. World and corporate headquarters abound in Southern Cal on the Ohio State nine yard line. Ohio State ahead seven to three. We've just begun the fourth period. The pitch out to Carter. Running the student body sweep, and it, the student body was thinned out rather quickly by Tim Fox, number 12, who's a hitter in that secondary. Everybody on this field's a hitter today. This is a football game. It's a surprise, frankly. We thought it was going to be a high-scoring football game after 42-21, 42-17. But no, it's been a great battle between the 10s, not the 20s. Total yardage in this game, 356 for USC, 169 for Ohio State. USC has doubled the offensive yardage on the Buckeyes. Hayden will look the field over. There it is. And it's a touchdown. Will Radovich the tight end. And that was against Neil Colsey. Well, Radovich beat Colsey that time. All right, let's take a look at this. The tight end. How he's used Obradovich today. Fires it to the outside. Colsey played it a bit casually, or at least it appeared that way, and a big catch. Oh, a 62-yard drive, or 72-yard drive. 
And now the kick by Lima Halu. And it's good. And USC has stormed back to take the lead here early in the fourth period. While they line up for the kickoff, it is now USC 10 and Ohio State 7. Pride, the very cornerstone of a new automobile. Cordova, the new small Chrysler. Here is the warmth of thickly cushioned contour seats, available even in fine Corinthian leather. So very luxurious, yet surprisingly affordable, Cordova is engineered with great pride to be a Chrysler. Cordova, the new small Chrysler. A lot of people call me cheap, wrong, thrifty. It's like the time I call Xerox, collect, and found out about their 4500 copier. It's the only one that copies on both sides of the same sheet of paper, automatically, and then sorts what it copied. The Xerox 4500 saves me paper, filing space, mailing costs, time, and money. Now you tell me, is that cheap or thrifty? George Burns, Johnny Carson, Alice Cooper, and Red Fox join the Smothers Brothers in the premiere of an all-new weekly hour of music and comedy, Monday, January 13th on NBC. The touchdown pass, Hayden to Abradovich. Pat Hayden threw four touchdown passes in that memorable come-from-behind Southern Cal victory over Notre Dame to tie an all-time USC game record. The kick is coming to Bashnagel on the six-yard line. Oh, what a coverage that was. Great coverage by number 33, Ricky Odom. That was the last scoring drive by USC. USC has 300 and 65 total yards in this game to 169 for Ohio State. The Trojans have doubled the offensive yardage. First down, Ohio State now on their 18-yard line. Ash Nagel in motion. Let's see if Ohio State opens up or goes to their ground game. Green running the option play. And the fired-up Trojans banging down Along the 19 and 20 yard line, that was Gary Jeter and Oak to Bradley. Bradley, a nose guard, has nosed his way into a lot of plays today. Boy, he sure has. And that defensive unit has really come on. Now, really, it's the offensive line of Ohio State. They must realize they've not that much time. Number one could be at stake. There's another game at the Orange Bowl after this. Pete Johnson at fullback. Bash Nagel in motion. Green. Going back to Willis. Willis, deep, way over his head. He was covered downfield by Ron Bush, the right cornerback, the sophomore. You just saw the fastest man to ever play football for Ohio State, Lynn Willis, streak down the field, but no dice. Third and eight for Ohio State on their 20-yard line, and they're trailing now 10-3. to three. Bill Ezzo goes in for Willis as you see him come to the bench. Once again, that situation where the big defensive rush, is, rush will come. You might see a blitz. You might see an inter interception. Ash Nagel in motion. Fake draw play. Trying to set up something. Green's running. 20, 25. He has, oh, what a run this there. Great play by Green. He did it himself. He came out of the pocket. He can run for a quarterback, I'll tell you. Very nifty feet. Very nifty. A view from the end zone. A quarterback in trouble. His receivers are covered. He gets the big rush. Jeter is coming from the inside. Mitchell from the out. Art Riley pursuing. Fancy legs with the white shoes. Well, he went 23 yards and took Ohio State out of trouble. They would have had to relinquish the ball had he not made that play. First down now. Here's a rollout left. He sets up. He throws a little dump off to Griffin. Griffin's at the 50. Streaks away to the 40. And he's down to the 35 for a first down. Or the 36. Marvin Cobb and George Stewart, who's now in a tackle, brought him down. We talk about quarterbacks. Well, one thing you have to do is have poise. If your principal receiver is covered, go to your safety valve. Not a bad way to have one, either. Arch Griffin. Moves off for Ken Bruce. 
First down, Ohio State on the 35-yard line of Southern Cal. In two plays, Ohio State's moved from the 20, their own, to the Southern Cal 35. Griffin's over the 30 to the 28-yard line. Archie Griffin, one of seven football-playing sons of Mr. and Mrs. James Griffin of Columbus, Ohio. James Jr. played at Muskegon College. Larry played at Louisville. Darrell played halfback at Kent State this past season. Ray was a backup for older brother Archie at Ohio State. He's just a freshman. Duncan is an All-State high school football player, and Keith, the youngest one, may be the best of all. Pete Johnson, the fullback. Seven football-playing sons in the Griffin family. First down, Ohio State. And they're now on the 23-yard line of USC. Art Riley has gone back in the football game. Osa Bradley, Art Riley have both been doing a really outstanding job. 11.30 to go in this game. USC ahead 10 to 7. Ohio State threatening. Quick dump pass incomplete to the tight end. Brands a flag has been dropped. Each team was penalized only once in the first half. It was very free of penalties. That's interference. That's an automatic first down for Ohio State. The only defensive penalty that gives a team a first down is in college, defensive pass interference. The man they haven't used is Dave Hazel. On the last play, Dave to the left side was wide open. Ohio State on the Southern Cal 17, first down. Archie Griffin has been held at 59 yards. That's good for most backs. But way below his usual per game average. There he is. He goes to the 12. Griffin, the fifth junior to ever win the Heisman Trophy. The others were Doc Blanchard of Army, Dope Walker of SMU, Vic Janowitz of Ohio State, and Roger Staubach of Maine. Only five juniors have ever won the Heisman Trophy. It is now on the 13-yard line of Southern Cal, second and six for Ohio State. Dave Hazel is spread out to the left. Just under 11 minutes to play in the 75 Rose Bowl game. Green running, Dan down to the nine. He's short of a first down. Man has amazing balance. He can be a running back on most teams. Gary Jeter tackled him around the ankles. Now when you've got an All-American tackle, you use that All-American tackle. His name is Kurt Schumacher. Earlier they scored a touchdown running to his side. He's at the left offensive tackle. Two tight ends, Bortazic and France. Third down, a yard and a half to go. Roaring through is Pete Johnson for a first down at the five-yard line of USC. Marvin Cobb from the secondary nailed him. First and five for an Ohio State touchdown. And this drive started on the Ohio State 18-yard line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plays. Johnny McKay should be nervous. First and five for the Buckeyes in their robust T formation. Johnson struggling to the three, and that's it. He's piled on by the Trojans at the three-yard line. Richard Wood and Kevin Bruce reached the first. Bruce is number 50. Second down, three to go for an Ohio State touchdown. The flow of the defense, the quickness of USC. There it is. The leading ground gainer, Griffin for Ohio State with 64. Cornelius Green, the quarterback, has 57. Second and three. Let's see who carries now for a Buckeye touchdown. And swinging wide as Green is over. Cornelius Green scores. There was a marvelous 82-yard drive for Ohio State. And it was engineered by Green. Green did most of it. What an added dimension when the quarterback can run. This man has excellent feet. What a fake inside to freeze him. He faked to Johnson. Out he comes. He can get outside. He's there. He passed. He ran the big play. Was his 23-yard run on third down when Ohio State had the ball on their 20-yard line. The kick is up. 
by Clavin, and the kick is good. So Ohio State comes right back. And as we line up for the kickoff, it's now Ohio State 14, USC 10. We just finished a wonderful book called How to Get Along with Your Car. We got it from our independent Texaco retailer. There's a chapter on how to make some of your own repairs, 17 ways to save gasoline, what to do when things go wrong, 26 chapters in all. Why don't you ask your participating Texaco retailer how to get this great money-saving book? They're such nice people. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. Hi. Texaco asked me to show you some little things you can do to save on fuel oil costs this winter. For example, have your heating system checked once a year. Turn your thermostat down at night when you go to bed. Check for weather stripping leaks and install storm windows if you can. And keep the damper in your fireplace closed when you're not using it. Energy is valuable. Please don't waste it. Put Ohio State back out in front. And Cornelius Green was brilliant in that drive. Running and passing the Buckeyes down the field. Skoldanis kicks. The freshman, Dwight Ford, waits for it on the two. Out he comes to the 10. To the 20. He stopped at the 23-yard line of USC. And Lenny Willis, 89, the speedster, flew down the field to cover it. All right. USC ready to go to work. Last time they had the ball, they marched the long one, 78 yards to go out in front. Back came Ohio State for 82. Pat Hayden playing his final game in a USC uniform before he goes to Oxford, England for his Rhodes Scholarship. There's Cornelius Green, quite a player. Most valuable player last year in the Rose Bowl. He might be very strongly in the running again this year. Hayden. This is a deep one, going going deep and over the head of Shelton Dick, who was injured part of the season, but he can fly. With all that time left, that was kind of a surprise. Uh, you would figure that Pat Hayden wouldn't try to go get it all at once. If he turns the ball over to Ohio State, he could be in trouble. They're a team that can grind it out and use up an awful lot of the clock. John Cantwell, a receiver, brings in a play from the bench. Shallon Diggs overtaking a breather after that long fly pattern he ran. Nine minutes and nine seconds remaining in the 1975 Rose Bowl game. Another capacity crowd. Tickets could have sold 200,000 here today. Cantwell in motion. Bubble on the exchange is kicked around. Ohio State ball. Ohio State has it. The fumble on the exchange from center. And this is a real mess up by USC. It sure is. He never had the football, Pat Hayden. They tried to recover it. All the white shirts are there. Looks like Ben Decree on it, 88. It was kicked by the fullback, Farmer. Farmer kicked the ball trying to pick it up. And now Ohio State has the ball on the Southern Cal 30 yard line. Southern Cal. Lost their lead, and now they're in real jeopardy here. Green puts them down. Johnson at fullback. It goes to Archie Griffin. Griffin to the 26-yard line. He's met by Oka Bradley, the nose guard again. A gain of four for Griffin. Second down, six. Well, you see the way Arch has been stopped. You have to figure the defense is going to try to take away Arch Griffin. That makes it a bit easier for... Cornelius Green, but with Green being able to go to the outside so well, we still might see Griffin break a long one. Four turnovers on USC today, three against Ohio State. Second down, six. Griffin again. 23-yard line, and that's it. David Lewis tackling. Third down, three to go for Ohio State. Eight minutes and ten seconds to play. 71 yards for Archie Griffin. And we'll repeat again. He has an all-time NCAA record streak of 22 games in a row of at least 100 yards gained rushing a game. Ohio State has called a timeout. 
And with that, we'll tell you the score. Ohio State 14, USC 10. Expressed by elegance, surprising affordability. Cordova, the new small Chrysler. Came out of the Rockies in the dark of night on those mountain turns dug in tight. Bigfoot. Introducing the Goodyear Polysteel Radio. Two steel belts and eight wide grooves to help prevent water from building up under the tire. Now five mile bridge is not very wide. When the wind gets blown, it easily slide. But even where it says slippery when wet, that Goodyear Polysteel Radio is the best bet yet. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Keeps its feet even in the rain. State. Third and three, Buckeyes on the Trojan 23. Green keeps it, pitches out. Bashnagel running the wing back auction play. Bashnagel comes off the wing, and he's the trailing back, and he picks up the first down. They faked up the middle just enough, and quite a call by Cornelius Green. It is now on the 17 yard line of USC. Clock stops at 7.57 remaining. Ohio State on the USC 17-yard line. The score is 14 to 10, Ohio State. They have just taken the lead away on an 82-yard march. And USC fumbled the ball right back again. That's Archie Griffin. Richard Wood brought him down. I want to remind you folks, on January 18th and 19th for the fourth consecutive year, NBC Sports brings you the Dean Martin Tucson Open, featuring the 1974 World Series of Golf champ, Lee Trevino, as well as last year's Tucson Open defending champion, Johnny Miller. It's on NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Second down, six, Green on the sprint out. Now throws, broken up brilliantly by Danny Reese. The pass intended for the fullback, Pete Johnson. Good save, Danny. The Ohio State team, where they have been gaining, is going to their right at the young uh, sophomore, Gary Jeter. The reverse has been true for Ohio State. They have been vulnerable up the middle. Incidentally, Al, that was a surprise by Ohio State. Johnson, the fullbacks, caught only one pass all year. Here's the draw play. And they stop him, Archie Griffin. At the 14-yard line, Oath of Bradley, what a game he's played, number 92. 14 to 10. Let's see how they play it now. The attendance that just announced here, fantastic again for the Rose Bowl, 106,721. Uh, over 106,000 people in the Mammoth Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Bashnagel will hold. Laban's kick is up, and the kick is good. A 34-yard field goal by Tom Claven. So USC needs a touchdown and a point now. We'll take time to say it's 17 to 10, Ohio State. I'm taking you to work with me today, little fella, because I want you to meet some good friends of mine. These are the guys I wanted you to see. The men you'll be working with when you get a little bigger. Believe me, you're going to enjoy it. Because these guys still care about things. Because nothing beats knowing you've done your best. Pride. That's something everyone who works for Budweiser still cares about. They're making sure that caring isn't just a memory. That's why people say that every taste of Beechwood Age Budweiser says so, and always will. Well, gotta go now, little fella. When you say Budweiser, you said it all. 
there's the entire story. Lots of time left. And back deep, Dwight Ford and Alan Carter for USC. Anthony Davis has not played in the second half. He was injured midway in the second period and left the game 71 rushing yards. Archie Griffin has 74 yards. It's out of bounds. And they'll line up for a re-kick. And while they do, let's go down to Ross Porter. Kurt, the Ohio State, two of their All-Americans are hurting. Archie Griffin was hurt on that last play. He has some bruised ribs, but the doctor thinks he will be able to go back in if Ohio State gets the ball. The news is not as good for All-America defensive tackle Pete Cusick. He hyperextended his knee earlier in the year. Today he re-injured it, and he says there's also a chance there might be a torn hamstring muscle. Thank you very much, Ross, and congratulations on the reports today you're giving us from the sidelines. Incidentally, Cusick, the All-American who was injured, has been replaced by a freshman today named Ed Beeman from Cincinnati. He has capably filled in for Cusick. Field position so important. This penalty did not help. They should get it back. Oh, what a kick, though, by Clavin. He drives wow. it into the end zone. Right forward, the freshman coming out. And he stopped at the 16-yard line. Down there on him, number 21 of Ohio State. There's some real coverage, and that is Max Midlam again. He's made two outstanding plays on punt and kickoff coverage today. The, Ro the Orange Bowl game from Miami. Notre Dame and Alabama will follow the Rose Bowl game. Ohio State would win this game. Alabama must then defeat Notre Dame probably to win the national championship. Oklahoma on probation, figured in some polls, but Alabama have the heat on it in the Orange Bowl, and you'll see it on NBC right after this game. That's Carter. Beeman chasing him down. Carter got across the 20 out to his 22-yard line. Six minutes and 15 seconds remaining. Ohio State, trailing 10 to 7, has come back to take a 17 to 10 lead. At halftime, it was seven to three, Ohio State. It is now second down and four for USC. Diggs in motion. There's a first down, Carter's out to the 30. Bruce Elia running down at the 30 yard line of USC. As you look at that defense, you may be wondering why is Ohio State playing so far off the ball? Well. It's almost the same reason that really the man in the eye is playing so deep. He gets a look at those holes that they develop, and the defense is trying to take that advantage away. They're playing it off, and they're reading, making it a bit more difficult. I had noticed Tim Fox, 12, and Colsey, 20, holding hands in that defensive huddle. Just to say we've got to last another five and a half minutes. Coming through is Dave Farmer, the fullback who has broken one of the longest runs of the game earlier. They haven't gone away from the game plan. There's the offensive line, the men in the trenches. Great second effort we're going to see. They continue to attack the same hole. And Southern Cal has second down. On their 40-yard line, second down and about a foot to go. They're going against the clock now, under five minutes to play. First down, over the 45 and out to the 50, comes Alan Carter, who's running beautifully here in the second half, running with power, and he's been a little cutting back against the grain. Carter now has piled up 63 yards, mostly in the second half. 446, clock is moving, plenty of time. They spot the Trojans at their 49. 17 to 10, Ohio State ahead. USC's ball, first down. Coming back is Ricky Bell. Bell on that delay is into Ohio State territory. Van Decree hit him around the ankles and Bruce Eli got him high at the Ohio State 45. Now, there's a Ray Griffin, Archie's little brother. He's faster than Archie. Weighs about six pounds less. Another in a string of outstanding football players. So evidently Archie Griffin 
will not be back in this game if Ohio State has the ball back. It is second down. Four to go for USC. They're doing it on the ground right now. Carter trying to sweep. He doesn't get the first down. Another man that's made it. Uh, played a fine game, was right there, Jim Cope. Played off Dave Farmer, worked to the outside. Third down and short yardage. This, Kurt, is the biggest first down of the game for USC. Three minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the Rose Bowl game. Woody Hayes, a student of General George Patton for the last 20 years. That's his idol. He had lunch. George Patton Sr. when Woody went over to visit the troops in Vietnam. Third down, a yard and a half to go. Carter trying to fight for that first down. It's very close. Very close. Van de Cree pursued him. So did that freshman again, Beeman. And let's see, the officials now are looking to the far side. And the clock is still going. And they're not even going to measure. Fourth down and a foot to go. USC must go for it. There's no doubt. We haven't talked about this USC front. Bob McCaffrey, John McKay said he's got so many All-Americans, this man would not make it. But he doesn't think there's a better center in the country. Now McKay signals Hayden to call a timeout. Two minutes and 34 seconds. Remain in this game. And here's... USC's crucial play coming up. They have fourth down and a foot to go. And they're on the Ohio State 41 as the Buckeye band toots it up. Well, you look at these two teams, you realize the last two years, you see the closeness of this score. It would almost seem like the only way you end the battle is with a draw. And Ohio State, frankly, is trying to fight off that very thing. But always keep in mind, if USC does get down there, is that the two-point rule can make the difference. I don't know, Al, who'll get the outstanding player. Last year, the most valuable player, the top player of the game was Cornelius Green. The year before, Sam the Bam Cunningham of USC. Jim Plunkett in 71. Remember Rex Kern with Ohio State in 69. O.J. Simpson in 68. There have been some players selected who have been on the losing team. Ernie Nevers shared the honors with Notre Dame's Elmer Layton back in 25. Benny Lam, Rose Bowl player of the game in 1929 for California. Right now, fourth down and a foot to go. Biggest play of the game for USC, Bell and Carter. And also, Tatupo. There's a first down for him. Alan Carter running behind Wedge blocking. Gives USC a first down. And how they needed that one. Okay, we saw Ohio State go to its left because of Schumacher. Well, USC likes Newton and Bain and a big gain. And Pete Kusick is back in the football game. They just game. put him back in, Al. USC has only one timeout remaining. They have the ball at the Ohio State 38. On this drive, which started on their 16, they've thrown only one pass. And that was the first play of the drive. Now here's Hayden setting up. Oh! Boy, has he got time. He's throwing deep to McKay, and it's a touchdown! He's got him for a touchdown. 38 yards, and now they can go for a tie or a win. What a catch by McKay. All and through high school. Hayden laid it right in there perfectly. All through high school, they worked together. All through college, they were roommates for a while in John McKay Sr.'s home. Plenty of time. Brilliant catch. Here's another angle. Four years in high school, they played together. Four years together in college. Hayden lived with McKay's his senior year in high school when Hayden's father moved to San Francisco. And that may be the last pass as a battery together. And now they have the option to go for two. It's 17 to 16 in favor of Ohio State. McKay has always been a gambler. I wonder what he'll do now. I think they're going for two. I don't know. Well, he's not taking that much time to, call, to talk over an extra point, Kurt. That's for sure. 
I think John McKay also feels, if I know John McKay, that you try to win a football game. Out he comes. Pat Hayden, winding up a brilliant career, is off to a slow start. But the last five games, he's hit nearly 60% of his passes. And he just hit the big one, 38 yards to his buddy J.K. McKay. And what a drive, 84 yards for USC after Ohio State had put on an 82-yard drive. Now they're moving the ball over to the near hash marks. All right, Kurt, keep in mind, he likes to roll out also. He's got plenty of room to the top, to the right. We may see him roll right and throw. Neil Colsey is on J.K. McKay. They're going for two. They could win it. If they blow it, they can lose it. Hayden throws. And he has it. Sheldon Diggs has it. And USC has the lead. Sheldon Diggs for two points. What a windup. It's still not over yet. But listen, here's a few of them. He goes right. He thought about running. And then he threw. I wonder if this was a rollout run. They're double teaming for him. Here. Well, he had the option. He had the option. There's a flip. Diggs right down on the ground. And that's J.K. McKay right in back of him. Here it is on ground level, Al. Such a big play. It deserves three. But I'll tell you, for 70 million viewers and for 106,000 here, it takes character to go for two. USC 18, Ohio State 17. Two minutes and three seconds to go. That was a poised drive by USC. They opened the drive with an incomplete pass, and then they hung in there in the ground and ate it up. They took their time. They didn't get in a hurry. And then they'd been waiting for that bomb to McKay, I know, trying to set it up, and they finally got it. Now Woody Hayes, who lost a heartbreaker at Michigan State on a long pass, and that, that young lady right now is... Kurt. Hoping it doesn't come out that way with the tears down her eyes. Len Willis ran two huge ones back this year. And the interchange there, Willis moved out of the middle of the side to get the kick. He's up to the 25, he's to the 30, and he stopped at the 31. Ray Griffin is in the game, replacing his brother Archie. Archie Griffin is injured with evidently some bad ribs. Now Archie's going back in, they've got him taped up. Here's Ray Griffin coming out. He didn't receive the kickoff. A minute and 59 seconds to go. Ohio State on their 31. They had the lead. They've just lost it. They're behind 18 to 17. Green flips complete at the 40-yard line. Short of a first down to Bashnagel, the wing back. Ohio State quickly trying to line up. Clock is moving, a minute 45. Ohio State has two timeouts left. Second down, a yard and a half to go. Look out, look out, somebody move. Bashnagel may have moved. They go ahead with a play, and it is a remarkable grab there by Bartosik, the tight end. I though. He did. That's Bashnagel coming. Here he is, the wing back. I thought he moved. Now he draws. The linebacker. There are a minute and 29 seconds remaining in this one of the best of all Rose Bowl games. It figured to be in the matchup. Two powerhouse teams, each defeated once. USC reaching its peak the last month of the year. Ohio State with a team that gained over 4,000 yards rushing. The legal procedure against each team. A legal procedure against each club. You know, this is the situation where the pass, again, is so obvious. Except when you've got brilliant speed, like Raymond, Raymond Griffin, sometimes the handoff works as well. Minute 29 to go. Second down, a yard and a half to go. Green under the gun. Look at him shake away. Now he's hit and goes down. Oh, they had the pass rush. 
Gary Cheater, the sophomore tackle for Cleveland, and Art Riley, the right tackle, swarmed him under. And a timeout called by Ohio State to stop the clock. This is the biggest play of the football game for Gary Jeter. He has not had that good a game. He's got all kinds of ability. He's got great speed, great strength, and a great second effort. Watch this. 79, Jeter pulls him down. A minute and 16 seconds remaining. At halftime, Ohio State led 7-3. to three. USC came back to take the lead 10-7. to seven. And Ohio State went ahead 17 to 10, and USC has come roaring back on an eight-point play to go ahead. Green throws, and it is completed to the 42-yard line of Ohio State to Bartosik, the tight end. A minute and seven to go. And it is a first down. They stop the clock on the first down. Mike Bertazic has been a real asset for this football team. First down, Ohio State, less than a minute ago. Green, look out, look out, he throws. And is it, what is it? Is it the 49? If he caught that one, that's something. Bartazic again with a remarkable catch. Three men around him. At the 49-yard line of USC, the clock moving. They're trying to get into field goal position. Anything. Green. There's the pass. Over the head of the receiver wide open. Lenny Willis stops the clock with 29 seconds to go. And USC leading 18 to 17. Down is Cheater, 79. You have to wonder whether the man that got them here with his foot against Michigan will get another chance to win the big one, the rubber match. Gary Jeter is injured. It'll be third down and about a foot to go for Ohio State on the USC 49, 29 seconds to go. Ohio State was leading 17 to 10. Ohio State scored on a field goal by Claven with 6.39 remaining. Then they kicked off. USC took the kickoff, ran it out to their 16, and then put on a remarkable drive of 84 yards, capped off by a 38-yard pass from Pat Hayden to J.K. McKay. And those two will go down as one of the greatest batteries in the history of USC football. Incidentally, Graham McNamee broadcast the first game coast to coast on radio back here in 1927 from the Rose Bowl. And he used to describe <coughs> the sun setting on the San Gabriel Mountains. And as we look up to the left over the Rose Bowl, it is quite a sight now. Blood red on those San Gabriel Mountains. Dr. Robert Wood, the team doctor of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Joe Costanza. Denny Munition, all have given us outstanding help. <laughs> Kurt, you said it, the Rose Bowl game you mentioned early, Arch Griffin did not continue his streak. Ozzie Lang also up here in our booth, executive producer Scotty Connell, Dick Arback has produced today's game and has been directed by the old timer Harry Coyle with his usual fine job out of the Rose Bowl. The 75 Orange Bowl game is going to follow immediately from Miami, Notre Dame, and Alabama. So stay tuned for this big blockbuster today on NBC. All right, we're just about ready to go back into action. Len Willis has come into the game for Ohio State. Ohio State trailing 18 to 17. As everything burst loose in this fourth period. 29 seconds to go. Dave Levy. Dave Levy, the assistant athletic director with the yellow cap and McKay's top assistant. Woody Hayes, 61 years old, has won so many times. His team doesn't rally here. It's a heartbreaker for him. 
Ohio State has won four times and lost three in the Rose Bowl. USC has won 13 and lost six. Back USC is the only Pac-18 that's a winner against the Big Ten in Rose Bowl competition. I do think Woody must feel they're going to cover him deep. The only way he can win it is to go short. They'll be looking for Bertazic again or back out of the backfield. The idea, give Clavin one shot. Only one timeout left for Ohio State. Third down and a foot to go. They've got to get somewhere to get a score. I don't know what's holding everybody up here. Yeah, well, they want to remind him it's third down. Nobody wants to lose it down the way they did at Dartmouth. Green on the screen is incomplete. Nearly intercepted by the linebacker, Dale Mitchell, 85. Now here's the last shot for Ohio State. They have fourth down and a foot to go. They have 21 seconds remaining. Charles Phillips, the rover man, may not be covering the speed deep. You can be sure he's going to be looking again for Bartosz. Last shot for Ohio State. They're going for that first down, and they have it. At the 48-yard line, they come in and call their last time out allotted. Archie Griffin gained the first down. Or have they taken the... Uh, no, they haven't taken a timeout. It's an automatic first down. There are 16 uh, seconds, an automatic timeout on the first down. Now they'll crank the clock up at the moment. 16 seconds to go, and the clock is moving. Green, running back. He's using up time. He'll go out of bounds, and he runs it out on the 45-yard line of SC with 47 seconds to go, and they're 45 yards away. Clavin can kick the long field goal, but I don't know who can kick a 60-yarder, Tom Dempsey. They've got to get closer. They still have one timeout left. Seven seconds to go. USC ahead, 18 to 17. Green's toss. It is no good. Pass intended for Dave Hazel, 82. They're down to two seconds and their last play. Charlie Phillips was defending. The last play for Ohio State. They're on the 45-yard line, and they're going to try a field goal. Holding is Bashnagel. This one is going to be 58 yards. The kick is up. It is up. It is short. The touchback. The game is over. And USC pouring back on an 80-yard drive in the last two minutes defeated Ohio State. USC gambled and went for the win on the two-point option and beat the Buckeyes in one of the all-time thrillers of the Rose Bowl. The final score, Southern California 18 and Ohio State 17. So that's it from Pasadena. On behalf of my partner, Aldi Rogatis, Kurt Gowdy saying so long and stay tuned now for the Orange Bowl following station identification. Action Times 2, James Garner in the Rockford Files, and Angie Dickinson as policewoman Friday night. Well, well, what was a handbike for? At this time, we are proud to introduce our 1970. I'm ready. Good. Vicky Stewart.